Iowa University in Washington, D.C. And it's next on MEAC College Football Saturday because someone's O must go. Put up or shut up time in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., Green Stadium. It's the Morgan State Bears against the Howard Bisons. It's a game that's normally reserved for the end of the season, but this time the Bison says, come Bears and play us today. Hello, everybody. I'm Roddy Duncan for me at College Football Saturday, and we're so glad to have you with us. This is for bragging rights on I-95. If you're not familiar with this rivalry, get ready for a good one, because these schools are just 42 miles apart, Morgan and Howard, and they have a rivalry that dates back to 1889. That's a long time ago. A guy who wasn't around then, but he knows about the rivalry, is Mark Gray, my broadcast partner. Mark? I'm just wondering, were you around at that time? I don't know, but before cable, I was. <laughs> anyway, you're right. This is for bragging rights, and these two teams, frankly, have a long and checkered history. Earlier, it was all dominated by Morgan. Here recently, it's been pretty much dominated by Howard. But one thing about it, like we saw last year, when these two teams get together, throw out the records, throw out all the statistics, it's about what happens in the 60 minutes or more. You know, both of these teams are struggling right now to get their first win of the season. Both teams are winless. However, the Morgan State Bears do have a very good running back, and they can only get them loose. I speak of Ali Culpepper. Ali Culpepper is a product of Baltimore's Dunbar High, a school that is known more for its basketball prowess, but this kid can really get it done. Last season, he was a part of a duo that rushed for over 100 yards against the Bison, and this kid can simply get it done. He's got blazing speed. He's got good hands out of the backfield. He transferred from Syracuse a couple of years ago to Stump Mitchell, the former coach, told me he had all the tools to go to the next level. If he stays healthy and the line plays well, he could have a big game. But the Bisons have a man who can definitely stop him on the other side. I speak of Obi Ara, number 91. You talk about tons and full of fun, that's the man. But he's a little bit nicked up. He's got some injuries. They're taping him up heavily, so it'll be interesting to see how far Mr. Ara can go. But he's been virtually unblockable all season. Has the quickness to beat a defender at the point of attack. Has the power to bull rush over people. This kid has the complete package and from everybody I've talked to all season the one glimmer of hope on the defensive front for Howard this season to this point has been Obi Ara and let me tell you something he's been unblockable and the Bears got a struggling offensive line Ooh wee it could be tough Ooh wee let's take a look at our U.S. Airways quarterback comparisons and there's going to be a quarterback change for the Morgan Bears you see him there number 10 Jorge Pena out of San Diego California but he's going up against one of the best quarterbacks and MEAC today Bobby Townsend and the last time he played Morgan he lit them up. He threw the ball 55 times, completed 37 passes. And as you can see, coming into the season through three games, he has already eclipsed the 600-yard mark. But look at his t TD to interception ratio. He has definitely got to improve on that, and Pena is going to have to struggle to get complete passes over the bigger offensive lineman all game. Well, we've got a good one coming your way. It's me at College Football Saturday. The Morgan Bears against the Howard Bison coming up next. Morgan State University ready to take on the Bison of Howard. But let's go on the sidelines to hear from the Morgan coach with our sideline reporter, George Johnson. All right, thank you very much, uh, Ronnie. Coach, coming into this football game, the club has lost its first two ball games. Still very young. What are you saying to this team to get them ready for this one? Well, we got nine more games, and uh, there's a lot of wins in this team, and we got to play together as one, and we can get this do job done. We're making a lot of mistakes. We've got to cut down our mistakes and try to control the line of scrimmage. What about very quickly, how do you attack this Howard team, especially because they're a young cl uh, club as well? Yeah, I view them on film. Uh, they can put points on the board. Uh, we're going to try to control the line of scrimmage. If we control the line of scrimmage, uh, stopping the defense line, then we got a good chance of standing in the game. And on the other side, too, we got to be able to control the offensive line. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Good luck to you in this game. Okay, thank you. All right, take, big, take it back up to you, Ronnie. All right, thanks a lot, George. We appreciate that so much. George Johnson is our guy. Our current weather conditions, 70 degrees. We've got some light rain, and the wind is very light. So it's football kind of weather, Mark Gray. One thing I've noticed over the years with Howard, high-risk offense, bad weather, their offense doesn't operate as efficient. The weather is going to be a big factor in this game because Howard really wants to stretch the Morgan defense, and it's going to be difficult for them to get the aerial assault downfield if the rain continues. 
All right, Cameron Ashton is your kicker for the Morgan Bears. And set to receive, you see him there, number 21, Paul Crew and Vincent Nilos. Those two individuals, we're kicking off. And once again, a battle that started back in 1889 continues in the year 2000. And that was Jay Corbett with a nice run almost to the 50-yard line. Now it's time for our United States Post Office starting lineups. And they look pretty good when you look at the Howard Bison, especially when you look at their big guys up there. And look at Marcus Ogden. Ogden. He's the brother of Jonathan Ogden of the Baltimore Ravens. And he's big, and he's mobile, and he's active, and he can do a lot of things. First and 10 from the 47 under the quarterback. You see him there, Bobby Townsend. The give to Hutchinson. He turns the corner. Gets about three yards on the play. Finally brought down by a bunch of tacklers led by number 59 of the Bears. Aaron Baker. Hutchinson last week, was, that was his first contest as Howard goes straight into the no huddle where he was able to produce on the ground. He had 88 yards rushing, and Howard knows that a great part of their success offensively has to do with him getting off on the ground. Also starting on that lineup, the United States Postal Service lineup, you see Javante Philpott. There is the man. I'm talking, of course, Mr. Townsend, a first down for the Howard Bison inside the Morgan Territory. Uh, he's a real athlete. He's spent some time earlier in his career at wide receiver, and earlier in this season, he caught a few passes against Jackson State, but this guy is a physical specimen. 6'6", about 240. When he comes around that corner with his speed, it's like a Mack truck. Well, the Bears of Morgan for their United States Postal Service starting defensive lineup. Nigel Walker, Aaron Roberts, and of course, Justin Patton. Now, that's the man that's really going to knock some heads. And then when you look at the other side of that lineup, they've got a young man playing a safety, Mr. Coleman, number 21, that you will hear from throughout this game. And we're going to have a flag. A look, looks like a little inadvertent face mask in that six uh, in that situation by number 91 Hale just Ian, got his hand in the wrong place at the wrong time. Ian Hale trying to stop Jermaine Hutchinson. Anxious to see if this is going to be a five or a 15 yarder because I'm not quite sure this early in the game they've had an opportunity to get testy enough for there to be some ulterior motive. We do have a face guard. Our officials for today's games are Charles Williams. Personal foul, face mask, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's your referee, Charles Williams. The umpire is Greg Smith. The head linesman is Calvin Harris, Larry Morrow, Dave Jones, Donnell Lathers, and Keith Washington round out the officials calling today's game. That's a costly penalty, and that will make it another first down for the Bison of Howard, and they can attack fast and often on the Bears. Morgan now in their last four quarters plus two minutes, 18 penalties. Oh, almost 200 yards. Burke Rice in motion. Play action, and that is Bobby Townsend with the ball. Bobby Townsend looking toward the end zone, and he's finally stopped at around the seven-yard line. A great gain on a first and ten from the 24 for the Bison. This is what makes Bobby Townsend so versatile, man. He's got the athleticism to make some things happen outside of the pocket. Great field generalship move. Look, fake the handoff. No, I've got it clean around the outside. When he gets out there one-on-one, -on -one, you'll see a stiff arm. He sets his blocker up, uses a stiff arm, and barrels his way inside the bear 10-yard line. You know, the great thing about it, the blocker was Calvin Simpson, Simmons, and Bobby Townsend pushed him ahead. M Mr. Hutchinson picking up tough yards. Jerome Hutchinson taking the ball to around the three-yard line. That will make it a second and about four yards to go. And there's the ubiquitous one from last week, Mr. Coleman in there. Leading the defensive assault. Howard is an offense whose personality is slowly evolving. And they got a good kickoff to start this drive. We're helped by a penalty. But you can see that Bobby Townsend is really about getting this running game going early in this contest. In the I formation, the Bison. Second down and three. The give to Hutchinson. Hutchinson across the end zone. Touchdown, Bison. That was an efficient drive. That was just quality execution. And one thing about it, when you got the big nasties up in front of Howard, they're off.
offensive line dominated this drive, and that bodes well for a team that's facing against a, a defensive unit that's really looking for itself right now. Well, you saw Ogden and the boys push ahead, the Morgan Bears, and they got into the end zone. I speak of the Howard Bison, and that is Jerome Hutchinson, a young man who has the same number of the sweetness. I'm talking Walter Payton. He says he wears that number in his honor and the way that man ran with pride. Jason Walker for the extra point. And it's good. Seven to nothing. The Howard Bisons have the lead. We'll come back with much more of me at College Football Saturday. We're coming back with much more action after this. Action. Bison have the lead of Howard University. Seven to nothing over Morgan State. Bison set the kick, but did you see that touchdown mark? Once again, look at that offensive line, and I speak of Brown Hopkins getting the job done. Number 79 just opening up the hole, and Mr. Hutchinson comes in to score. You got to give big props to number 36, uh, Troyce that time for throwing a big block. Troyce Sanders just blasted the safety that was coming up to fill the hole, and that opened it, the, it up for Hutchinson to just take it on into the end zone. Anthony Collins receiving for Morgan, and he is brought down by a ton of tacklers from the Bison of Howard University. Mr. Hill, Lone Hill on the tackle. And Anthony Collins is a fun receiver to watch. Those of you who haven't seen the Morgan Bears, you're going to love their receivers. Let's take a look at our United States Postal Service starting lineups for the Morgan Bears. And you see Brown, Wright, Salters, Moore, and Foster up front. And then you've got Wilson, Culpepper, Collins, and Mark Lester, two of the baddest wide receivers in Morgan history, along with Mr. Harrison, who is a threat to catch the ball. On the quarterback for Morgan right now is Pena. He gives to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper turns, gets about two yards on the play, maybe just a yard. Finally brought back by the Howard defenders, as you see right there. All on the case for Howard was Lamont Williams. Well, one thing about Culpepper, last week he rushed for 54 yards on 18 carries. Every other Morgan running back finished with negative yards. That speaks volumes about the evolution, if you will, of their offensive front. They are big, but they are young, and they are learning. Like Coach Willie Jeffries likes to talk about, they're still babies with milk on their lips. Anthony Collins wide out to the right, a single backfield. The give is to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper will get a first down for the Morgan Bears, and he is across the 45-yard line. Good trap. Now let's take a look at our United States Postal Workers, the starting, starting lineup, Walker, and you see Parker there for the Howard University up front. Those are the guys along with Baston. Then you've got Obi Ara, we talked about him, Michael Sanders, Tracy White, who coached says is the best player ever to play at Howard University because he wears coaches numbers <laughs> and of course Lamont Williams there he is Obi Ara and he is one heck of a player we'll be calling his name out again today the give was to Ali Culpepper and he's going to take a loss on that play Mark and you're exactly Mike Sanders comes up from his linebacker position the freshman to stuff him good job of playing off his block that time as Culpepper looked to dance to the outside he ran right into the defender also there was Sean Kearney, number 49 for the Bison. You got a good look at him right there. Now pitchers have him, Obi Ara. Now, he, technically, since Howard runs a 3-4, he's listed as a linebacker, but he plays a lot more as a stand-up defensive end out of that two-point stance. And Pena struggles to, with a snap from center. You're going to get that. You know, you got a freshman quarterback trying to get used to a freshman center, just hadn't had enough reps yet. And there you see the first snafu, a, a gaff, if you will, by the Bears' O. Then they make it around about a third down and 11 on the play. A quick replay. Allie Culpepper, you see him there, number six. Well, that, it was just a bad snap. You know, quarterback, you can't make a play until you get the ball. Castavius Patterson was the normal quarterback for the Morgan State Bears. Started their first two games of the regular season. Last week against Towson in a losing effort, he did some things that Coach was not very happy with. Stanley Mitchell, and therefore he's not playing right now. 
Pena on the run, and Pena finally brought down the bison all over him, and that was Marcus Rogers on the tackle. Well, you see, that's the dilemma that Pena's going to face all afternoon. He's a bit undersized at 5'10", and he doesn't really have the quicks to get to the outside to escape the problem. So it could be a long afternoon. The Bears may have to think about going to, like, the shotgun or the five-step drop, but we've got some laundry, I guess, on the field, huh? Discussion being held, and maybe it's against the bison of Howard. We'll see. It could rule to an automatic first down for Morgan. Let's see what happens. This would be huge early on to give the Bears some life. Looks like it could be one of those discipline situations. So I guess you could say that it's only fitting in the nation's capital, Ronnie, that we get a filibuster to hold things up. I tell you what, a late arriving crowd, but this is a game that people look forward to. And we talked about it at the beginning of the game that it's normally reserved for the end of the year. But they're playing this game now, today. Illegal participation, 12 men on the field against the defense, 15 yard penalty, results first down. That is a costly penalty because the Bison had gotten off to a great start. Howard went right down the field on Morgan State, and now this gives Morgan an opportunity to get his act together. And you know the nerves have to be there for Jorge Pena, the freshman quarterback for the Bears. In the shotgun formation, a situation that Coach Stanley Mitchell said they would run a lot of. This is Pena's first attempt to pass, and he is... He just can't believe what's going on there. Well, he was finally brought down by Walker, Ricardo Walker of Howard. He's got a dilemma. I mean, looked like Lester came from the far side and was open for a hot minute. And uh, on a three-step drop, he's got to be able to deliver that pass. And I'm just wondering, can he see in the passing lanes that open up? But we do have some more laundry down on the field. You know, this guy is only 5'10". He's a young quarterback. He's from San Diego, California. His first start, and his plays are where? On his wrist. Look at that. All the plays for Jorge Pena are right there. Maybe if I can get a look at it, I can tell you what they're about to run. They might be going to the slot right, I think, on the next play. Okay. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Getting into the uh, arms of the quarterback already. But uh, you were talking about Custavius Patterson, and everybody talks Five about him as being the... Repeat first down. He'll be more of a... He's the more athletic quarterback. This is the pure passer. It'll be a first and five on the 35-yard line for the Bears of Morgan State University. Jorge Pena, Bears in the I formation. Two wide receivers to give to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper turns the corner. Culpepper still on his feet. And Culpepper brought down at around the 35-yard line. That's a good play. That's taking advantage of a tendency that I know Howard had to be scouting. Howard sent a blitz through the A-gap or between the, the uh, center and the tackle. And what happened is the linebacker came unabated into the backfield, but the play went against him, and that's why Culpepper is able to go to the outside. You'll see number 45 blast through there, but the sweep goes away from him, and Culpepper has the speed and the moves to get to the outside to do much work. Ball at the 26-yard line, first and 10 for the Bears of Morgan State. Ali Culpepper is the lone back. Mark Collins in the game, and there's another flag throw. I'm just wondering, did we have too much time, or was the clock, the game clock, actually rolling? Well, you know, when you look at the fine receivers Dead that ball. Morgan has. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. You expected this from a young quarterback. Here's a guy who's finally getting an opportunity to start. He's a freshman, and he's nervous. And he's going up against the biggest rival that Morgan has in the MIAC. But this time, I think one of the big fellas up front, one of the youngsters, a little bit overzealous in trying to beat the defender at the point of attack, just was a half a count early. Bears still in the eye formation to give to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper turning. Culpepper still on his feet. And he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. I was talking about the Morgan State wide receivers, Anthony Collins and Mark Lester. When you speak of those individuals and you talk about what they've done throughout their history at Morgan State, it's pretty amazing. This is Culpepper once again, trying to sweep to the outside, dances. I, I like the kid, man. He, he, he's able to, he's a north and south guy. Not a whole lot of east coast stuff. Now watch here right here. He's going to deliver a blow right here. Number 49 is going to step up and get rudely introduced to Ali Culpepper. Mike Sanders, a freshman, meet junior Ali Culpepper. And he and they meet once again, Ronnie. <laughs> Putting on the paint. 
I guess they're just getting familiar one with one another. Take a look at some of these numbers for Ali Culpepper because when he's there, he gets big numbers. Look. 37 attempts, 106 yards, 2.9 yards. The average, he can do much better. But when you look at that offense, I mean, you look at those backs, all the other backs are in... <laughs> Anemic. I mean, they're in the negative percentile. I mean, he's got 106 yards through two games plus, and that leads the team with a 2.9 average. Cole Pepper was bringing in the pain, but bringing on the moves for the Bison was Sean Kearney, number 49. That was a hard hit, and he was all over it. Speaking of those wide receivers, these are the best group of wide receivers Morgan has had since 1979 when they had Michael Holston and Clarence Holzendorf, and at that time was the last winning season for the Bears. Football has been not the best sport to be a part of at Morgan State in the last 21 years. The most wins they've ever had in one season has been four. four. They're winless so far this season. Suffice to say the team is definitely a work in progress. And that was what a, a touchdown catch. catch. A man Walters with a touchdown catch, a 20-yard pass, and that was awesome. Unbelievable. The junior from Harrisburg runs a great route and just hauls in the over-the-shoulder catch. Watch this. A great, well, Pena does a good job of taking a bad snap, getting control of the ball, and just giving his receiver an opportunity to make a play. He takes a shot, hauls it in. That's an outstanding catch. Wow. Ahmed Walters is one of those receivers from Morgan State that can put on the points in a bunch. You know, it takes a little bit of time. Flag on the play, though, Mark. No, we've got a timeout. Morgan got some confusion with getting their special teams out there. So I guess in uh, their haste to celebrate, they forgot that they had to kick an extra point. This could be another look at what it looked like last season. This was a game that continued to go one way to the other way. Every time you turned around, each team was scoring. And you talk about fireworks. No, it wasn't July 4th in D.C. It was at the end of the football season when the Morgan Bears and Howard got together and they lit up the scoreboard. Well, you figure that Howard should be able to have their way against the Morgan defense. Morgan next to last against the pass defense. Howard themselves and Steve Wilson has got to be feeling good about what his offense did, but defensively, they showed absolutely nothing on that drive. I mean, and Howard is supposed to be a team that, you know, third from the bottom defensively totally, but their pass defense is middle of the road in the conference, and they, on that one play, were totally out of position. Cameron Ashton will be kicking for Morgan State, the field goal. Kick is up. And it's good, and it's seven all as the Bears and the Bisons are tied in the nation's capital. Here's a look at the touchdown pass of Med Walters, 20 yards from Jorge Pena. And we've got a tie ball game. Morgan State and Howard tied at 7 7 with 7 44. Ronnie Duncan along with Mark Gray. And let's go down to George Johnson, our sideline reporter, for a little insight. George. Gentlemen, before the ball game, Coach Mark Harrison, who's also signaling, signaling in the plays and is your wide receivers coach, says, I've got the bomb squad. I have three of the most dangerous receivers in all the MEAC. He says, A.C. Collins is Mr. Showtime. Mark Lester is his intimidator. But when you look at his third receiver, Mr. Waters, he says he's the workhorse, has the best work ethic of everybody out on the field, and he is the sleeper. And just showed us that a second ago. Back up to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, George. We'll be going back down to George, often throughout the game. George Johnson, our sideline reporter today. Well, and following up with George talking about, I don't think anybody's sleeping anymore on Walters. Once again, that was Paul Crew. And Walters down there and there on the tackle, too. It's not Paul Crew from the longest yard, is it? I tell you what, it was the longest return Morgan has seen <laughs> so far today. Now let's take a look at our national car rental scoring drive. And for the Bears, it was a play that saw a little bit of everything. Allie Culpepper turning the corner and making things happen. Punishing people, and then Pena comes back and he connects downfield. Beautiful catch by Armand Walters. Over the shoulder, leaping, and had the presence of mind to get that one foot in bounds. That's an outstanding play. All right, that brings Bobby Townsend and the Howard Bison back on top to get things going. Remember, this is Green Stadium, their home field, and the turf they know very well. Collins back to pass. He finds Javante Philpock, and he drops the ball. He had it, but defending him for the Bears, 
was Justin Thomas. Well, they had him out there in the scene for a hot second, and I think he probably led him just a little bit too far. Phil Pot has been a real star for the Bison this season, currently averaging about 22 yards per catch, and this is a strike. A half a second earlier with the delivery, and I think Bobby Townsend makes the connection, but I got to sound like you back in the days of our game at Dover. Hit him in the hands. He got to catch that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Gray, you are my man. It is Bobby Townsend in the blue uniform wearing the number six. Morgan's in white. Howard's in blue. I didn't want you to think I didn't pay attention to what my elders tell me. Hey, that's okay. I don't mind being 42. <laughs> to give the Paul crew, he turns the corner almost for a first down for the Bison. Melvin Coleman, he of the 15 tackles and 12 solos last week, MEAC Defensive Player of the Week, was there to kind of corral Mr. Crew. Crew showing good speed getting to the outside that time. You know, when you speak of Howard's offense, it is an evolution of an offense, just trying to get generated. They're missing a lot. I mean, let's face it. One of the best receivers in all of the MEAC last season was Elijah Thurman. Elijah Thurman is not here right now, and there were times that Bobby Townsend this season has played from the wide receiver spot. And he's the quarterback. Crew spins off. Crew finally brought down. And he may have gotten enough for a first down. We'll have to see where the officials mark this one. Don't forget next week, me at College Football Saturday, we will be in Delaware, Dover, Delaware, once again, as the Hornets will host a great game. Won't they, Mark? Yeah, they will. They've got uh, the big, bad Hampton Pirates coming in. And now Howard is staying strictly with the no-huddle offense. We have not seen Tyrese Rice yet. This is a guy they like to find the ways to get the ball to, and I know he is one of those people that they're counting on to make some big plays to stretch the defense. Hutchinson with the ball. Hutchinson takes it over. And Hutchinson takes about seven yards with him. And, man, he is brutalizing. What's obvious is that Howard has no passing yards with Bobby Townsend. Townsend is the most prolific passer outside of Quinn Gray in the BN. But the bottom line is they know that the Bears are young up front and the Bears are getting blasted at the point of attack. So when your big nasties are controlling the line of scrimmage, you just go ahead and let a guy like Hutchinson finally get off. And Howard says that their offense has been putting up big yards, but Coach Steve Wilson wants some balance. He wants to get the run rushing attack going in order for them to operate efficiently. Well, you hear the whistles, the flags were thrown, and something was done uncharacteristically on the football field that needed to be addressed. There he is, the starting quarterback who has yet to complete a pass, Bobby Townsend of Howard. Well, dead ball prior to the snap, false start, offense remains second down. And I'm going to tell you why that happened. The band went into their first stands of whatever it is that they were playing as soon as Bobby Townsend started to go into his snap count and somebody probably just jumped. You know, that's the home field disadvantage sometimes. Steve Wilson, coach of the Howard Bison. You know, there are some folks are saying Steve has got to start putting up some big wins and some big victories around here. North Turner will be the only coach in Washington, D.C. Well, look, this, is, this guy has one of the great offensive minds in college football, and sooner or later his players got to step up and make some plays for him. And, 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 you know, this is a young offensive line. They've got question marks on the defensive front. I'm not quite sure that the Bison weren't, like, overrated a little bit coming into the season. Let's watch it right here. You know, Townsend in trouble. This is an athlete, you know, just battling. Might have been a clip right there. Looked like a block in the back. But, again, showing his athleticism, ability to get the outside, to avoid the rush, and turn something negative into a positive situation by not losing yards. 5.37 left to go in the first quarter. Ball is on the 43. Third down and eight for the Bison. Bobby Townsend out of the shotgun. Townsend set the throw and does not find the intended receiver incompleted pass to Kevin Simmons. Well, Simmons, I don't know. It looked like he was a little lackadaisical in running his route. He didn't break that off sharply and go to the outside. He kind of looped it out there. And if you remember last season against Morgan, it was the Bison Bomber. Towson set the single-game MEAC record with 37 completions and 522 yards in simply an outstanding. It, that was probably the best fourth quarter that we saw all season certainly by an individual standpoint. Yeah. 
T.J. Starling set to return for the Bears. He signals for a fair catch. The Bears will take it back at the 20-yard line. We've got a tie ball game, but an interesting one. Morgan and Howard, MEAC College Football, continues after this. Bears hold the lead in this series. 32 wins, 30 losses for the Bears. 30 wins for the Bison and three ties. It's a game that can bring up great history and great football. Yeah, but I bet if we look over the last 20 years, boy, I bet those stats dramatically swing towards Howard. Well, Howard has won the last five games of this competition between the two teams, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens today as we're tied 7-7, and we're still in the first quarter of action. Ball's on the 20-yard line, and Pena still under for quarterback. The kid was to Alec Culpepper, but he was met straight on by Lamont Williams, the linebacker who was there blitzing and felt no misery for anyone, just wanted to bring the pain. I tell you something, he came on a run blitz, and he just beat the offensive lineman off the end, and there was no place for Culpepper to go. It's like he was in the huddle and knew the snap count and beat the Morgan offensive line off the snap. He's a bad man. You see him there, Lamont Williams. The Morgan offensive line is a new assembled offensive line. Stanley Mitchell said he wanted to go with this younger group to see how they will perform. So far, he has to be pretty happy. They're going to make some mistakes. Culpepper with the kid. If Cole Pepper still on his feet, turning and spinning. Cole Pepper turned nothing into something for about four yards. You know, he got back to the original line of scrimmage, if for no reason than just his effort. I mean, this guy just keeps his legs moving. He's got great vision. And watch him just buy himself some time. Look, the pursuit is there. Outside, Howard gets great pursuit to swing him back in. But he breaks a tackle, dances, swings back to the outside, and just picks and chooses, feels his way for about four yards. So what could have been, you know, third and 14, third and 15 becomes third and 10, a much more makeable situation. Already with 34 yards on the afternoon is Paul Pepper. Pass completed for Morgan State. Anthony Collins still on his feet. Collins across the 40-yard line, almost to the 43. Pena showing field generalship in his first start, buying himself a little bit of time, giving his receiver an opportunity to work himself free, and then watch Collins' ability. This is like my car. It wasn't a pretty pass, but it gets the job done. Collins takes the pass, and watch him. This is just individual effort. Nice, nice little move to work himself into the middle of the field. Who's that big nasty getting down the field right there? Charles Woodall at 295 pounds going down the field, 20 yards to make the stop. Single back formation to give to Alley Culpepper. Culpepper still on his feet. Culpepper finally brought down on the tackle for the Bison. Right there was Sean Kearney. You know, an interesting story in reference to Jorge Pena. How did he find out about Morgan State University? Through the internet. Of he looked it up on the internet, saw the campus, and said, hey, I want to go there for college. That's Jorge Pena, starting quarterback for the Bears, number 10. I think it's the funniest story because of the simple fact of how today's technology can lead you to cop to a college campus he looked up on the internet and found out wow i like the uniforms i like the way the school looks do they need a quarterback and that's jorge pena hey if you want to find out more on the internet about me at college sports go to meac sports.com for the latest updates and you will find out what's been happening and you also get an opportunity to find out about that meac college basketball tournament that's going to be happening later on this year and you know that is tons of fun so go to meac sports.com for the latest on all your MEAC schools. Well, Marani, early on, it, it appears the first defensive adjustment that the Bison defense has made is taking away the sweep play. If you think back to that first offensive series the Bears had, Culpepper was able to get to the outside and make some things happen. Howard is now coming with blitz from the outside, and that's forcing him back inside. And that was the critical component to the success of the 93 MEAC and Black College National Championship football teams here at Howard. Not only did they have a talented quarterback in Ted White, but they had a defense that was really good, especially in crunch time. I think back to their um, their Heritage Bowl victory where the defense had to uh, step up on a goal-to-go -go situation, and they did it. Hey, did you know, 1999, Howard vs. Morgan, both teams combined and broke six MEAC team game highs and eight MEAC individual game high records. Way to go, Morgan and Howard. You know, they talk about Harvard, Yale, they talk about Ohio State and Michigan, they talk about USC and UCLA, but there's nothing like Morgan Howard, a game that's normally reserved for the end of the season. However, we've got an early reservation for today. 
Pena has nowhere to go and nowhere to hide. Finally brought down. That was Norvell Goffey. Well, Morgan is still having problems with that A-gap situation. This is another blitz, and it comes right from the inside. And once again, the linebacker is unabated to the quarterback, is Norvell Goffey, and he thwarts the Bears' offensive effort. And what began as a promising drive with a nice catch by Collins goes for naught. Watch him right here, just unabated to the quarterback. I mean, he just, I, I don't know if they're in, in, in the Bears' heads. Well, check that. This is a third down situation. Morgan's got one more crack at it. And once again from the shotgun, the lone quarterback, you see him back there. Pena, Pena still on the run. Pena lets one go, and what a tremendous reception that was by Collins. Anthony Collins, number one for the Morgan Bears. He hung himself out there to drive, despite the fact he didn't get the first down. Just the look of that shows you the type of talent that he possesses. Let's go back to the quarterback, though. Watch Pena. He's in trouble, running for dear life. He gets a block coming up about right here that's going to buy him a little bit more time, and he leaps his feet. Is that Doug Flutie or Jorge Pena? Wow, looked like he was turning a double play or something. You know, Trey Tribble was number two. It went right through Trey Tribble's arm. <laughs> He couldn't believe it. This guy's only 5'10", Mark. He's a little itty bitty guy. <laughs> Making great, great plays. A minute and 20 left to go in this first quarter football action. The punt is up. Tariq Rice still on his feet. And that's a guy they talk about here at Howard that they really want to get the ball in his hands to an awful lot. He'll line up. He's one of their re re uh, leading receivers, and he has made huge plays coming out of the backfield over the last couple of seasons for this team. Already this season, he's got six catches and 52 yards. So we will see number 44 as a critical component to the Howard offense at some point during this game. Well, obviously, Howard is moved by their quarterback, Bobby Townsend. Then, of course, the running back, number 34, Hutchinson. However, Torek Rice is a kid that I saw last season against South Carolina State, and I was totally impressed with his ability to do things. And obviously, offensively, if they get number three in the ball game, Javante Philpock. Morgan's in for a long afternoon. Hello. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Andre Bryant, and he laid him out. You see him. Kevin Simmons didn't know what hit him. Andre Bryant was coming with everything. And it will be interesting to see if he gets up. Look at him. Bobby Townsend had him in the seam and right up to get his legs. Oh, my goodness, what a shot that was. He landed right on his tailbone, and he is in some serious pain. This is a hard game. And I tell you what, man. It's a hard turf, too. And, uh, you know, there is no give because under AstroTurf, more often than not, there's cement. And I'm going to tell you something. He was up in the air, and he took a shot. And, man, you extend your body like that. Watch it. Watch it right here. He's going to be fully extended and end up doing a full somersault, something straight out of the Olympics. Look at this. Wow. Morgan's got some hard hitters back there. Obviously, that was Brian on that play, but one young man that you will hear before this day is out is Melvin Coleman. I saw him last week against Towson in a losing effort. He never gave up, and you talk about tremendous hits. He was there all the time. There he is, Kevin Simmons, and we hope that Kevin is okay. One of the Tallahassee, few, Florida. Yeah, one of those athletic Florida types. Big kid with some size, some speed. A little, little shocked that uh, he chose to come all the way up to the nation's capital. And let's take a look one more time. Andre Bryant, well, right here. That's the young fella that stepped up in there, a 5'9", 175-pound cornerback out of B Bell Glade, Florida. Bell Glade, Florida produced not only Bryant, but the quarterback, Custavius Patterson, and there's a guy that's uh, toiling in the NFL right now named Roosevelt Blackman, who came from a historically black college in Atlanta. So uh, that little small corner of Florida is certainly producing its fair share of football players these days. Let's take a look at the MEAC players of the weekend. You see, there's my man. You know I love this guy because he can is, play. Yes. Troutman out of Bethune, Cookman. Can he not do everything? He does it all. You see the passing yards. And then, of course, defensively, Melvin Coleman, number 21 of the Morgan Bears. James McCall, offensive lineman out of Hampton, got the offensive. And the rookie was Cedric Copeland from FAMU. 
All right, he's being taken off the field right now, and we hope that Kevin Simmons is okay. Uh, it looks like he may have injured his knee, and you see him there coming back to the sideline, and that is going to be costly because Steve Wilson has an offense that is just getting started. They're generating more power for themselves, more confidence in what they can do, and to lose a guy like Kevin Simmons right now at this point is big. Let's look at the United States Airways quarterback comparisons. And a little surprise here because Jorge Pena is 3 of 3, while Bobby Townsend, who came into this game with all kinds of records, is 0 of 4, has no yards, no touchdowns. And Pena is 49 yards and one touchdown. Who would have thought it or thunk it this early? That's why you play the game. Second and 10, ball on the 26. Bobby Townsend still with the ball. He can run as well. And they made Townsend pay for it that time. A whole host of bear tacklers leading the charge was Aaron Roberts coming all the way from his defensive end position to track Townsend down. Another big guy there was Justin Patton, the big-time linebacker, number 49 for the Bears. Feel the pain, Bobby Townsend. The pain is coming on today. Well, you know, Morgan said coming into this game that if he got outside the pocket, they wanted some guys to step up and lay the leather, leather to him. They want to make him think so that in the fourth quarter, instead of attacking them in the secondary with reckless abandon, may come around the corner tiptoe just a little bit. So I know the Bears and their linebacker crew are definitely waiting, sort of almost laying in the cut, if you will, for uh, Mr. Townsend to get outside. Bears in the eye formation. Excuse me, that's Bison. Give to Hutchinson. That's a that could be. Is that a delay of game? I think that'll be a delay of game call on Howard. Offense. It remains third down. Wow, crucial third down situation. That'll make it third and eleven. Ball on the 25, and they're gonna tack on some more yards, so Bison will have their work cut out for him. We're winding down the first quarter of this game, 7-7. The Bears of Morgan, the Bison of Howard. This is MEAC College Football Saturday. Boy, and Kevin Simmons looks like his day is just about done. They're putting the ice on his knee right now. And Bobby Townsend will have to look at another primary receiver as we start the second quarter. We'll come back with much more of second half action coming up. Green Stadium, home of the Howard Bison. We've got a tie ball game on the at College Football Saturday, and we've got the Bison saying we've got to fight a bit to get going because it's 7-7 against a Morgan team that does not have the superior play of Howard. Well, to this point, Bobby Townsend has not a from a stand uh, a passing standpoint. <laughs> But when Hutchinson is running like this, he really doesn't have to worry about those aerial numbers. Hutchinson turning around the 33-yard line. Jerome Hutchinson. And uh, the always with a smile on his face, delightful guy. Saw him before the game, and uh, he waved. And you could tell that he is not very happy with the way he started off this football machine. But he's going to do better. And here's our Xerox first quarter of stats. And the big one is right there. No passing yards while Morgan has 60. For the Bison, first down, the Bears have five, the Bison has four, and time of possession, nine minutes for the Bears, just six minutes for the Bison of Howard. Howard also has two more penalties for uh, about 15 more yards as well. So things are not in sync at HU just yet. T.J. Stalling set to receive the punt. And Stallings takes this one. Stallings still on his feet. Stallings still making a move. Stallings finally brought down. For a while there, it looked like he was going to take a loss, but he gets up to around the 24-yard line. We'll come back with much more of this good game. Morgan and Howard after these words. University is rich in its tradition of MEAC College Football Players of the Year. As a matter of fact, eight players have taken that honor from Howard University with Tracy Singleton winning it twice back in 1981 and 1982. We're back to live action as the Morgan Bears are taking on the Howard Bison in our MEAC College Football Game of the Week. 
Ronnie Duncan, Mark Gray, along with George Johnson on the sidelines. And we have a 7-7 game. If you're just joining us, the fun has just begun. Jorge Pena is the quarterback for the Bears. Bad snap over his head. And this one takes it down to about the one-yard line. And there was Obi Ara seeing an excellent opportunity to take advantage of a huge mistake. Well, you're putting a lot of pressure on a freshman center to make a blind, no-look snap. And, well, the best thing about a freshman in that situation becomes a sophomore. And Ara showing blazing speed to track down a, a Juan a Jorge Pena and the football. You know, we talked about him at the beginning of the game. He said, we were going to talk about this kid. He's a big-time player. He's been hurt. But Obi Rock came through in a huge way for the Bison. Allie Culpepper gets the ball out around about the five-yard line, giving Morgan some breathing room. Speaking of Obi, there he is once again. And we were led to believe he was a little banged up. But on those last couple of plays, uh, Look, none the worse uh, for wear for me, man. I got to tell you something. He's showing quicks. He's, he, he's getting off the line well. He's beating people at the point of attack. I mean, this is the guy that we heard a lot about. And to this point, doesn't look like he's ailing and he's not ready to, to deliver today. It'll be third and 16 to go for the Bears to get a first down. Pitch out to Ali Culpepper. Changes direction. Culpepper finds a little daylight. Culpepper still on his feet. Culpepper finally pushed out of bounds and he'll be short of a first down. Well, you just saw the devastation of a major gaff early in your drive. And now Obi Arraz a little gimpy coming off the field right there. They said he wasn't feeling his best. It took him a while to come out of the locker room onto the football field. You know, it's amazing about this game. There was a little drizzle. The cloud is there. But as soon as they started to play football, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> man, the weather started to look beautiful here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And a nice We're crowd. all over the place. Yeah. 12 minutes and 19 seconds to go just before halftime. Set to receive for the Howard Fison. Another bad snap. A bad snap, and wow, what a hit there. Ronnie, rivalry games ain't for the faint of heart. <laughs> and you, and you. We'll come back with much more of me at College Football Saturday. After these words, we'll take a look at that play. <laughs> Hey, this one, Kevin Simmons, the injured player for the Bison, George. Guys, there was obviously a lot of concern as they took him off the field. They applied ice on the inside of that left leg right there at the knee. It's very sore. I asked the trainer, I said, listen, what's wrong? He said, it looks like it's a sprained knee. Then I asked, will he be back at this game? And they said, we don't know yet. We'll examine him at halftime. Then I went to Kevin and asked Kevin, I said, do you think you'll play? He says, it hurts. I can't walk. I don't think I'm playing anymore today. Big lost to a receiving core that sometimes looks to its quarterback to provide some answers. Back to you guys. All right, thanks a lot, George. Chris Cunningham on the start there for the Bears of Morgan State, making it a second and 13 for the Bison of Howard. This game is a little surprising to me, especially the way that Morgan has responded to Howard. Well, that would be a big offensive loss if Simmons isn't able to come back. Morgan's defense is really a, a spirited unit right now, but back to Simmons for a second. Uh, Simmons already in three games over 200 yards, averaging a little bit more than 18 yards per catch, and Roberts that time showing great pursuit to haul in the back. Aaron Roberts, a defensive end, and talk about ground and covering ground. Number 47 gets in there with his friends. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> Somebody did. Showing linebacker quicks from his D-line position. 11.04 remaining, third and 13. Bobby Townsend calls a timeout. Boy, I tell you, that's one that Howard's going to look back at the films and say, you know, we had Morgan's defense confused. Is there a way we could get that play off and try to make something happen? Because I think Howard's biggest problem there, they had too many men on the field, and that's why they took a timeout, and we'll take a timeout. We'll come back with much more of this game. Morgan and Howard and Steve Wilson after this. A Saturday afternoon, Ronnie Duncan, Mark Gray, and George Johnson with you. Howard and Morgan, Howard in the blue, and Bobby Townsend in the I formation. Javante Fulp, Phil Pock in motion. And this time Townsend is ready to let it go. And he's got a receiver all alone, and he's in the end zone. Emmy 
a see you later for the Bison. That was Jamel Jackson. The freshman and Morgan's veteran defensive backfield blew a coverage, and there was nobody within 20 yards when that ball was released of the receiver, and it was off to the house. Jackson with a 65-yard touchdown, and Townsend waited to pass, and I'm telling you right now, the wait is over. Bobby Townsend is on the board. And they can go ahead and wave that bison flag because you know what? That was one heck of a touchdown play. Well, you just got evidence of the kind of arm that Bobby Townsend has. When he gets the time, he's got, that was just a great pass. I mean, he laid it out there, gave his receiver an opportunity to run under it, and it was off to the house for the score. Kicking for the extra point is Charles Card, and the kick is good. That makes it 14-7, the Bison of Howard University. You knew it was going to happen sooner or later. It was just a matter of when. You see him here in the shotgun formation, and he lets the arm go. 65 yards to Jackson, he catches it, and it's M-E-A-C-U later. And that's his first touchdown of his Howard career for number 80. And you're right, he got behind the secondary, and it was M-E-A-C-U later. Uh, you talk about the spirit. The spirit is alive and well. The sun is coming up, and I'm starting to feel a little bit better, man. The flu had me down at the beginning of the game, but now I've got the together. A little pumped up now, Arch. Look at that kid, man. He beat the entire secondary. You're talking about Melvin Coleman and company, guys who know how to cover and can hit hard, and the bison is letting you know this is our house. And if you want to take something out of our house, maybe you've got to come and get it. Well, it's in for a dogfight, so here we go. We've seen the first big off offensive play. Now, you just got to wonder. It's almost reminiscent of what we saw at Delaware State. You know, and there's the National Car Rental scoring drive, Ronnie. Three plays, time of possession, one minute and 23, a 65-yard touchdown catch from Townsend to Jackson. But He's action Jackson today. At, at least on that play was, but like we saw in uh, Dover game one, the team looking for an upset play close. There was one big play that sort of stem the tide and all of a sudden now Morgan is put into a position where they have to respond. William Shazo was the return man on the kickoff. He brings the ball out at around the 23 yard line or 22. There he is. Well, Howard, as we said in the first quarter, has already made their adjustment. They're taking away the sweep lanes. They're doing a lot of zone blitzing from the outside. Now you got to start looking at the Bears to go up the middle some. I'm wondering, and we've got to stop it to the action right now, but I'm wondering if Coach Stanley Mitchell is thinking about putting Castavius Patterson in. The second although, the, timeout. although, Jorge Pena has been playing well and has had Morgan on the board with seven points. Watching Patterson last week, he is a talented quarterback. The problem is, Mark, he lacks the discipline to get the job done. You're right. I talked to, I talked to Coach um, Mitchell at practice on Thursday, and he likes the athleticism that uh, Patterson brings to this team. I mean, but what happens is this guy has been checking off at the line of scrimmage and checking into bad plays, and you just can't do that. You know, Howard has a new basketball coach on campus talking to him, the man in the know, George Johnson. George? All right, thank you very much. Yeah, that's right. I've got Frankie Allen with me. He's kind of just sitting back, relaxing. You see, eventually it's going to get tough on him because you're going to have to get ready for this basketball season coming up. Congratulations on your first year appointment. Talk about the things you want to accomplish here. Well, I tell you, we want to, you know, get some credibility back into the program. Uh, Howard's got great tradition uh, in their athletic programs. Uh, obviously, their academic uh, prowess is, is worldwide. And uh, we want to try to have a strong uh, men's basketball program. I see no contradiction to having strong academics and a strong basketball program. Two appearances in the NCAA tournament with Tennessee State. You rebuilt that program, so obviously you know the keys to success. Let us all know right now what it is. Well, hard work. There's no substitute for hard work, and that's what we're trying to instill in our players to develop a work ethic and have some kind of self-confidence. And the only way you get to have self-confidence is to go out and prepare yourself. And like we're trying to prepare these young men here at Howard University to really feel like that they 
they can win in men's basketball. I know it's a lot easier said than done, but we're prepared. I've got a great staff, you know, and I know what it takes. And we're going to hit the recruiting trail, bring those student athletes to Howard that can make a difference and put us up at the top of the MEAC. What do you know about the MEAC, about these teams? I know you've coached at Virginia Tech prior to that. You've seen a lot of different teams. What do you know about the MEAC clubs? I know the MEAC is an outstanding basketball conference. Sometimes it's under-publicized. Uh, some of my closest friends are in this conference. Uh, Sal Alexander at South Carolina State's done a tremendous job there. Fang Mitchell over at Coppin. Will Jones at Norfolk State. You've got a, 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 a nucleus of teams and uh, and also coaches in this league that have great experience and know what it takes to win and be successful. And I feel proud to be coaching at Howard, to be coaching among the people that I've just mentioned and some of the other coaches that are in the league. This is a very talented league, especially when we talk about our point guards, we talk about our perimeter players. The only thing that maybe separates us sometimes from the quote-unquote high-profile conference is that good big man. And so every coach in the league is trying to get out and get that really good big man. Last but not least, unique situation for you last year. This team lost its head coach. These kids didn't have a coach for a couple of weeks. Talk about the challenge that that is to kind of get them, you know, looking at your program and looking at the way you want to do things. Well, I think the players realize that the administration is 100% behind, 100 behind them. Uh, President Swigert uh, brought me in here. Uh, he said, you know, what's in the past is in the past. We really feel like we've got a, I guess, an experienced coach is what he called it. He wants to run a clean and competitive program, and uh, we're looking to move forward. Our players know that we're going to work extremely hard with them. We're working hard now to try to get them to realize that we're going to be a team and we're not going to play as individuals, and I think we've gotten a lot of those hurdles already behind us, and we're just looking forward to the season. All right, well, listen, good luck to you this upcoming season. Frankie Allen, the head coach at Howard University. We'll see him up at Bird Gymnasium as the season progresses. Back to you guys up at the booth. All right, George, thanks for the Frankie Allen basketball show on <laughs> MEAC <laughs> football Saturday. We missed an entire series, didn't we? Morgan's punning now. <laughs> Something about those three down and out series that will definitely adversely affect. <laughs> At least the interview was entertaining. Yes, it was. And so now Howard has an opportunity to really um, go for the jugular, so to speak. Morgan team struggling, looking for its personality, looking for some confidence. You hit them with a big bomb. You're up by uh, a touchdown now on your way. I mean, at your house. Now I'd have to say now, if I'm Howard, I wouldn't be shocked to see Steve Wilson go back for the juggler one more time. One young man is in the game, Torres Rice, number 44. He's right. missed the excitement for the Bison. Something about people wearing number 44 at Howard, that's uh, uh, an explosive well, you know, number. Number 45 is a big number, too, yeah. because that's Steve Wilson's number. And Tracy White wears that number. He's on defense. And Steve says no one wears that number unless you are a player. Uh, obviously. And you can bring it. <laughs> so Coach has a little ego going, but that's okay. He's earned it. Hutchinson with the ball. Hutchinson still on his feet, showing tremendous balance, and he gains about maybe four yards on the play. Well, there was some arm tackling going on in the backfield that time, and that's pretty much gave uh, Hutchinson an opportunity to pick up positive yards. A little half sweep that time, and the Bears, you know, didn't get the heads in there. Nobody locked up, and he was able to break a couple of tackles, and that's why he was able to pick up about four yards. All right, Bobby Townsend, you see him there. Your quarterback, a 65-yard bomb to Jackson putting Howard up 14 to 7. That's where we stand right now with 8-11 to go. Ball is on the 43-yard line. Second and eight. Bison ready to take and load up and shoot away. Torque Rice in motion. The give to Hutchinson. He stutter steps. Hutchinson moves up, gets a first down. It all depends on where the ball is spotted but it might be enough for a first down. Then again, it might be a yard short. Justin Patton, number 49, the linebacker for Morgan, got taken to school. And I know class isn't open on Saturday, but <laughs> Mr. Hutchinson took him to school, gave him a little stutter step move, and was able to explode through a hole. And that was definitely what picked up that five yards. So for a move like that, is Patton now in detention? <laughs> Oh, boy. It's good to be home, man. <laughs> High formation. True. On the carry. And he's got enough for a first down for the Bison. Bison just not relying on Bobby Townsend by the air. They obviously feel that they have a significant advantage in terms of 
physicality up front. Their offensive line has just been dominant to this point, and that's a big source of concern for Coach Mitchell. His young players up front, he spoke openly with me about the problems that they're having in the A-gaps, and uh, right now, Howard is just blasting him right now. And we still have yet to see, you know, Javante Philpott as a big part of the HU offensive repertoire. He's wide out to the right, Javante Philpott. And Bobby Townsend's looking his way. Townsend going up. He's got a man. He's got a man deep. And that is another touchdown. Jonathan Brewer from Javante Philpock. Whoa, my goodness. Bobby Townsend all over the place. Philpock is there to give the high five. And another strong and long touchdown from Bobby Townsend. Well, watch. It's a near side roll. And what Bobby Townsend does to buy himself some time also allows his receiver to run this post pattern. See, he's out of the pocket and the receiver is running the post. So effectively, he's running with the quarterback and the quarterback leads it out there to him. And that was just a can of corn. That's what you call pitch and catch. The pitcher, Bobby Townsend, the catcher, Jonathan Brewer. And about 30 yards later, the Bison are up by, well, at least two touchdowns. <laughs> and they almost turned something into nothing. Almost something into nothing. Marcus Rogers, tight end. You got to love his break. But he doesn't hold on to the football. We'll come back with much more of me at College Football Saturday. The Bison up 20-7 to over the Bears. More after this. Everyone wants to make it to the big one. For Morgan State, 637. You know, this is a late arriving crowd. Morgan has no home games to speak of other than homecoming. That's against Savannah State, and they'll be playing that at the Raven Stadium. So with Baltimore being just 42 miles from Washington, D.C., this is like a home game for the Morgan State fans because they have an opportunity to come to the nation's capital and see their beloved Bears. But and see their beloved Bears look real like the bad news Bears <laughs> losing 20-7. to 7. I was about to say it is like a home game. Uh, midway through the second quarter, already down by two touchdowns. But really, <laughs> you look at the mistakes that the team has made, they've been really beating themselves. You had a bad snap when you had the momentum coming out on a drive where you could go up. You had a couple of snafus in terms of uh, the quarterback and the center making their exchange and you had two big mistakes in the secondary that were blown coverages that led to two big Howard scores so it's not like Howard's beat Morgan right now Morgan once again beating themselves the Bears have got to score in order to go into the locker room at halftime with any threat of winning this football game that was Pena out of the backfield going to Henry Vizen and Vincent just helping his quarterback out that time. Talk about running for dear life. That's exactly what Pena was doing in that situation. And, you know, there's Obi Ara right there. Boy, they, this guy is out there on all guts right now. But he's definitely not moving as fluidly as he was earlier in the contest. But he's keeping that defense fired up. And that's something that we haven't seen from Pena either. He hasn't really moved that fluently. Even when he's been in trouble, he's like an erratic run. And he's been able to get off some things that normally he would not be able to. You remember Eric Zire? Uh, yes, I do. I'm seeing a lot of that in Pena right there. Yeah, he did remind me of Eric Zire getting tackled right there. He <laughs> I mean, sure did. All right, Mark, you know what? Good analogy, my friend. I guess the number 10 really had you blind, huh? <laughs> what I meant to say was Pena is like no, you said a what pocket you meant to passer. <laughs> who is a little undersized, and when he gets out of the pocket, he's playing into the defense's hands. <laughs> Just like, like Eric, Eric Zyre. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're having a good time here at Green Stadium, Howard University, Washington, D.C. Five minutes and ten seconds to go just before halftime, and the Bears are down to the Bison, 20-7. to seven. The Bison just so tough. See, there you go. A quarter... Then he settles in the pocket, finds his receiver, and that's the first down for the Bears. And that was T.J. Starling, one of those other receivers for the Bears of Morgan. And you see what happens with Pena when he's able to set up in the pocket and he has a passing lane. He's able to deliver a confident pass, and that's why the Bears are able to pick up the first down. But see, he look, he to... sits in the pocket, he sits, he looks, he fires, and that's a strike. When, he's ha when he has the move, you see those low balls, those two hot ground balls that he's been throwing, or those bad passes that go awry. Well, he's a freshman, Jorge Pena, out of San Diego, California, to give to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper. 
makes a turn, gets about three yards on the play. A microcosm of his career, that one play. There was a lead block in front of him by Vincent that had an opportunity to put a big-time shot on number 49 for Howard, Mike Sanders, and he just didn't, they just didn't hold him up. That's the difference in between, I, I don't know, picking up like four or five yards and perhaps breaking it into the secondary. Sanders having a big game thus far for the Bison. Pena looking to pass. Pena finally brought down. Pena still on his feet. And there for the Bison was Bastin. Anton Bastin. Well, coach has definitely coach uh, Stanley Mitchell, that is, has a dilemma right now because the three-step drop is not working. Pena's not tall enough to see over top of the line, so he can't make the quick, the quick read. Consequently, he can't make the quick decision. So now you got to think about, do you want to make the full-time commitment to the shot gun to give the kid an opportunity to survey the field right now? Much better quarterback out of this position. Number one, two, or three for Morgan. Anthony Collins, Mark Lester, Matt Walters, all in the game. The fine wide receivers, and this time Pena's going deep. Pena incomplete. Pass was intended for Ahmed Walters. And that's a freshman read right there. I'm not quite sure he believed that Walters was wide open because he had gotten behind the secondary and he could have let him out. And that could have been a big gainer. So freshman is developing on the fly. And what coaches will tell you about freshman quarterbacks is you sync with them as freshmen. But look at this. Look at the stats from last week. Just a, just a horrific evening at Towson University for the Bears last week. 17 penalties, 184 yards. One of those penalties, Coach Stanley Mitchell got tossed out of the game. One of those situations where he was uh, questioning an official. We well, talk about gut check time right here, Ronnie. And this is it for the Bears. Uh, Bears defense cannot afford any more blown coverages. Now, Steve Wilson loves the passing game of Howard University and Bobby Townsend. We talked to Coach Wilson about it, and he said this. Two-dimensional quarterback, 6'6", 225, can throw it and run. Uh, he comes back after uh, having an outstanding year. Had some injury problems. And all those have been resolved. And, uh, you know, we're going to let him do what he does best and uh, not worry about uh, anything other than throwing the football and hoping for uh, great results. That, of course, is Coach Steve Wilson talking about Bobby Townsend. You see him there. Two completions, but for some big yards. Swing pass to Rice. So they and finally found a way to get Rice the football. Yeah, and Rice gets around the first down, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. They say, they. I talked to Bobby Townsend yesterday, and he talked about he wants to find ways to get number 44 the ball. Watch this. This is effectively a sweet play. Just dump it out and let a talented back use his blockers downfield and pick up the first down. This is the equivalent of a running play. It's a short quarterback friendly pass that continues to move the chains. Coach Wilson talked about the evolution of his offense and they are growing up. Javante Philpott, you see him there. He's the receiver. He's across the 40. And around the 30 yard line and around the 31. Now you see the game plan beginning to kick in. We saw early in the game how it was focusing primarily on the rushing attack. So much so that Bobby Townsend had zero passing yards at the end of the first quarter. Now you've got some balance there. Morgan a little bit back. They've been burned deep. So the uh, safety men and the defensive backs are dropping a little farther. So you work the underneath stuff to guys like Phil Pot and Rice. And on back to back plays you pick up the first down. Great creative play calling by the Howard Offensive Brain Trust right now. And it keeps Morgan off balance. Again, we've got a pass, we've got a touchdown, and it's in and out of the hands of Jackson. Jackson could have had his second touchdown of the day. Anytime you give a guy like Bobby Townsend that much time to be back in the pocket, he is going to burn you. Watch, this is a strike, but Jackson has got to climb the ladder and haul this one in. Split between two defenders over a third, and that's just one action Jackson wishes he had back. Well, Axon Jackson wishes he had it back, but Bobby Townsend is not to give up too many opportunities like that. And I'm telling you right now, he may have only had two completions. When we looked at that statistic of Bobby Townsend, but he's starting to heat up. 
Now Howard is definitely looking for just a way to tweak the little offense to perhaps keep these changes moving as we look at the fine university that we stand on the in the stadium of. Howard and found it. <laughs> look at him, man. That's right. Our Greyhound quick facts. 1867 Howard University. Almost 10,000 students are enrolled here. The name is Bison, not Bisons, right. but Bison. And the colors are red, white, and blue. Joined the MEAC Obviously. when the MEAC started back in 1970. One of the charter members of the MEAC. And now to uh, Morgan State University as we look at the Greyhound quick facts once again. Founded in 1867, currently on the corner of Cold Spring Lane and Hillen Road, Northeast Baltimore. 6,100 students strong. Nickname is the Bears. Orange and blue are the colors, and they were one of the charter members of the MEAC. Some of the more notable alums to come out of Morgan. Uh, how about Earl Graves? You know, uh, Marvin Webster. Marvin Webster, yes. You know, Mark Gray. Who's that guy? <laughs> Matter of fact, I saw Mark Gray's picture on the post office wall earlier this week. So if you see him, call your local authorities. <laughs> We're going for the jugular right here. I like their offensive aggression in this series. They can sense that they can really put a team who's psychologically in some trouble right now. They can just go ahead and go for the knockout. Second and ten, ball from the 31-yard line. And once again, Townsend, plenty of time to pass. He finds the receiver, and he's inside the five-yard line, Jonathan Brewer. This drive was set up by everything they did in the first half. They ran sweeps to the outside, they cut back up the middle, and when they attacked, they were show throwing underneath routes to the outside. Now they're working the center of the field underneath after going over the top of them deep, and it's just clicking on all cylinders right now. You look at Morgan's defense, it, lo it looks like they're confused right now. They don't have an answer. Jerome Hutchinson trying to pound his way into the end zone. And did you see the crushing hit? Did you feel the pain? Oh, Kirk Williams, you're the man to blame. <laughs> -wee. Number 96 had the radar locked on, and he just found him like a torpedo. <laughs> Look at him. I'm serving. Subject locked. I'm on it. I'm on it. Hello. Boom. Man, crushing blow that time. You like the sound effects? That was great stuff. They pay you for that as well? <laughs> they may stop after that one. <laughs> What was that guy that used to make all those noises in the Police Academy movies? My brother? <laughs> you know, you do have a striking resemblance there. Draw a little uh, mustache on you, you guys are one and the same. <laughs> you really are. You know you're in this booth, not hey. by yourself. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> a number of people around to protect me, yes. <laughs> so we've got a timeout as the Morgan... And that's Coach Stanley Mitchell, uh, and, and who's an interesting story. A, a, a veteran of the military who came back from uh, Vietnam, became one of the solid high school coaches in the Baltimore area, led the Dunbar High football program to a state championship. And that's a program that's known a lot more for its basketball than they are for football. Almost oh, definitely. Go back to Sugar Cane and Skip Wise. Uh, and then, of course, you David talk about Wingate. David Wingate, uh, Reggie Williams, Reggie Lewis, Tyrone Muggsy Bogues. I mean, uh, Tyrone McKay. I mean, you've got some names back there. But the one thing about Stanley and if we get an opportunity to take another picture of him he had a heart attack during the offseason right. and he recognizes the value of what football really means to him you know it's not a matter of life and death he's been there with a heart attack very young coach he's only in his second year as a head coach of Morgan State University he's trying to get this program to develop you know we talked about Morgan being a consistent loser since 1979 right I mean last time they had a winning season was when they went to the division one double way playoffs and that was it and after then, I mean, the most wins they've had in the football season has been four. And, you know, people look at it, and quite honestly, it's pretty pathetic. <laughs> and Jerome Hutchinson in the end zone. Touchdown for Hutchinson. And the Bison continue to bounce it, pound it, and put it on the bed. Well, it's one of those situations where the big guys up front and, uh, for Howard are definitely willing the, the mano a mano battles right now. They are just blasting Mor Morgan at the point of attack. You know, look at him. Look at the surge. And why, right here you'll see a whole big number 63. Didn't really have anybody to block, so he helped with the double team. And by the time he got his block on, Mr. Hutchinson had cruised on into the end zone. A very impressive drive by Howard. Totally eschewing the run, going with the passing routes across the middle, over the top. Balanced offensive attack. Perhaps the Bears' defense was just what the HUO needed to get on track. Going for the two-point conversion. 
Townsend in. Townsend scores. Two points. And now it's 28 to 7. The Howard Bison. And you talk about <laughs> you talk about digging yourself out of a hole or trying to climb out. I'm anxious to see the psychological way that Morgan approaches this last minute and 27 seconds of the first half. In theory, they could get down the field and get a score and then come back out with the opening possession. Now here's our national car riddle scoring drive, and it was simple. It's all about the Bison of Howard University. And it was a sweet one. You see it there. Townsend finds a big-time receiver, gets inside the five-yard line, and then he left the dirty work after Jonathan Brewer. He gives to Mr. Hutchinson. Jerome Hutchinson, number 34. Howard is up 28 to 7. That is our score with one minute and 27 seconds remaining just before halftime. Coming up at halftime, we've got our NUE band show. We will show both the Howard Band, wow. as well as the Morgan Band. So if you like the bands of black college football, then you're going to have a double dose of fun and excitement for you at halftime here on the campus of Howard University, Green Stadium, and the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And as you see there at crutches, there's Kevin Simmons, a young man who made a spectacular catch but unfortunately was on the end of a vicious hit right on the left. I don't know if I can kick out of bounds against the kickers. Morgan has elected to take the ball on the 35-yard line, first down. Well, now I'm, I'm interested to see if we do have a change in quarterback. Costavius Patterson has now made his first appearance in the game. The uh, junior transfer is in there, and uh, I guess they need some athleticism. How, how would you know with the Bears trailing by three touchdowns right now? They need to get somebody out of the pocket. The versatility is there, Mark. He can do more, and he is more creative when he's on the run with the football. Costavius Patterson is in the game. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Patterson shows you exactly what I was alluding to. The fact that he is like Randall Cunningham with that football. He loves the number seven. He loves to run with the football. And talk about an arm, Mark. This kid can gun it. The questions are not with his athleticism or his ability. The questions are between his ears right now. He really Attitude is the key. Exactly. And if you're going to check off, you better check off into the right plays. And from what I hear last week, he checked off in some situations, and the Bears were none the well, – well, they were bad off for it. But maybe this is a good situation for the Bears. Coach Stanley Mitchell makes this kid sit. You see some impressive things that Jorge Pena was able to do, but obviously not with the experience in the snaps of a Castavius Patterson. Patterson comes in and gets Morgan a first down right away. Bad snap. Patterson picks up the ball. Patterson's still on his feet. Patterson is looking for a pass. Patterson finds. Oh, he had Mark Collins, but the pass was too high in the air. But he was able to avoid the sack, and the drive can continue to move, and that's something that Pena cannot do, or at least he wasn't able to do when he was in there, was to get outside the pocket and turn nothing into something. And once again, you know, this play goes for nothing, but it wasn't a sack. And that's huge for a team like the Bears, especially when you got a young offensive line. And there's Obi Abraham right there still tracking people down from his linebacker spot. Man, Obi's breathing a little hard there. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball is on the 50-yard line. Castavius Patterson is your quarterback now for the Bears of Morgan State. Patterson still got the movement in his feet, but finally brought down. And that's Obi Ara, Ara, Ara. <laughs> The man's everywhere. He certainly is. Now Mr. Patterson knows where he is. I'm sure he'll be checking out number 91 for the rest of this half. Bears out of timeouts. Patterson stops the clock. 15 seconds left to go just before halftime. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we've got both bands coming up in our NUE Halftime Band Show. The Morgan Band, the Howard Band. So uh, get the VCR. Yes. Get them rolling because the show is about to begin. Can't wait for that. And I'm not quite sure you can close the book on this one yet. I know it's a three-touchdown lead, but these two teams have tendency to just open up the can in the second half on each other, and we can see a whole lot. So don't, don't you dare go away just yet. I would never go away from a Morgan Howard game. So much tradition. The heated rivalry. And it is 42 heated. miles apart. All right, there he is, Castavius Patterson. 
Still looking. Sending his receiver downfield. Patterson finds a man, and he gets out of bounds. That was Ahmed Walters but with three seconds left to go. Bears going to have to come down quickly, down the ball, and then hopefully get the field goal team on the field if they're going to try that. It'll be about a 50-yard, 55, 60-yard kick. Clock right is counting. Patterson may have one second left. And we he got might have one second. But there is a flag on the play. One thing about it, Patterson has a come in and has seemed to have given the Bears a bit of a spark offensively. And a spark that they needed. I mean, sure, you want to see the Bisons look good at home, but you want a competitive game. And if Morgan can come back in the second half and make it an exciting affair, we're going to have a great time. Well, in the battle of adjustments, clearly, in the first half, Howard won that battle offensively by adjusting to the Bears. A couple of defensive series, but the bottom line is, in the second quarter, when Howard really took the reins off of their offense, Morgan couldn't keep up. Let's go downstairs to George Johnson. And, George, what do you got for All us? All right, thank you very much, Coach. First half, seems like you had a tactic. Keep the ball on the ground first quarter, put the ball in the air in the second. Well, we're basically trying to see the things that they needed to do to stop a running game. We got some speed at wide receiver, and we came in and, and got some big plays, and that's what we're going to need to have. Very quickly, last year was a wild and affair second half. What do you expect second half here? Well, we hope the same thing in the first half, but uh, we got to continue to stop them from scoring points. Thank you very much. Steve Wilson, the head coach of Howard University. Let's take it back up to the booth. All right, thanks a lot, George. George, we appreciate it. This is our score at halftime, 28-7. to The Howard Bison has the lead over the Morgan Bears. We've got much more coming your way after these words. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. E halftime show and now you're watching the Morgan State Marching Band. Thank <laughs> you. 
28 to 7 at halftime. You just got finished watching the Morgan Band. Now that it's time to continue with our NUE Band Show as we present to you Howard's Showtime Band on our NUE Band Show. marching band. We've got a great game, 28 to 7, Howard Lee's. We're coming back with highlights, scores, and much more after these words. Research-oriented institution. The university has over 10 schools and colleges offering degree programs in more than 100 specialized subjects with doctorates offered in more than 20 areas. Howard University is committed to providing the best possible education for those who are challenged to serve as leaders of the 21st century's global community. 
And now it's time for the United States Postal Service Halftime Show. Hello, everybody. Roddy Duncan along with Mark Gray. And, Mark, let's get right to the highlights because we talked about some key players at the beginning of this game. Allie Culpepper, 14 carries, 61 yards in the first half. He was basically the offense for the Morgan Bears. Watch him here, number six. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Showing speed, the ability to break tackles and pick up positive yards. He was one of the few bright spots on an offensive, uh, offensive unit, frankly, that got really sputtered in the second quarter and had a lot to do with number 91, Obi Ara of Howard University. You know, Obi Ara is a guy who came in here pretty banged up, but when it came time to play, Obi Ara showed up. As a matter of fact, number 91 had some big plays. He didn't get off to the great start that we had predicted because, let's face it, but once he got Jorge Pena down by the goal line, you knew Obi Ara had a hurrah of a day. And then once they went to a more mobile quarterback than Morgan, but Ara was right there to haul him down from the backside as well. So when you put everything into the mix for a guy that's injured, Ara's having a huge game. Now for the touchdowns. United States Postal Service halftime show and take a look at it because the Howard Bison came out big time with some big plays. It started with Hutchinson who capped their opening drive with a three yard run and then Jorge Pena went down to the corner of the end zone. He found uh, uh, Armand Waters and then Townsend hooked up deep. He found Jameel Jackson with his first touchdown ever as a Howard University Bison and then on the next drive the Bison are going to come right back. They uh, Townsend gets out Outside the pocket, goes deep down the far sideline, finds his man. That's Brewer once again for another touchdown. And then, of course, Hutchinson was able to carry another touchdown into the end zone for the Bison. So you look at, basically, it was a dramatic second quarter where Howard won the statistical battle and the edge on the scoreboard. That's why they lead right now by three touchdowns. All right, Al Xerox halftime stats. And as you can see, Morgan lost some yards. As a matter of fact, they went backwards, only four yards rushing, and that's because they lost yards past all about Howard and Bobby Townsend, 157 yards. Time possession, Morgan had it longer, but they don't have the most points. I'm telling you right now, Mark, if the Bears can get back in this game in the second half, it's a good game. If they can't, it's a blowout, and it's all about the bison of Howard University. And I think the key person to watch will be the quarterback, Custavius Patterson. Patterson is the guy that can get outside the pocket. Remember, Morgan's offensive front broke down in many instances and left Jorge Pena kind of caught out there to drive. I think Patterson can make some things happen out of the pocket. Whether he can make three touchdowns remains to be seen. Folks, it's not an earthquake. It's just shake, rattle, and roll football on the campus of Howard University. Halftime, yes, baby. we got the shakes. We got a rattle, and we've got the roll. Coming back at the halftime, 28-7, Howard over Morgan on MEAC College Football Saturday. The Howard Bison over the Morgan Bears, and a rivalry that stretches back to 1889. But now we've got Howard still kicking that behind. And I'm telling you something, they came out and looked a little lethargic in the first quarter, but I really think you got to marvel at the offensive game planning and the in-game play calling of Steve Wilson. You know, the critics around here who don't really have Coach Wilson's back are always wondering, what is he trying to accomplish on offense? Why is he calling this? Oh. He has called a solid first half of football here, setting Morgan up with the running plays, going, making a conscious effort to get the run game off in the first quarter. They were effective and they were tied. That set Morgan up for the big plays downfield, and that's why the Bears were blowing those coverages, particularly off of play action and when Bobby Townsend got to the outside. Well, that's why I made that that comment that North Turner isn't the only coach in Washington, <laughs> D.C. People are thinking about the job because I had several people come up to me and reference to Steve and said he better win this game. Yeah. See, this is the type of scoring that those alumni who want to win every game in Howard University want to see. I mean, it's not like he's taking on FAMU. It's not like this is North Carolina A&T. This is Morgan State. This is not the powerhouse of the MEAC. But this is a rivalry game, and you throw everything out of the window in a game where you're going against your fiercest rival. But they will look at this game and say, okay, you got your first win against Morgan. Okay, Morgan hadn't won a game. Let's face it, both teams coming here winless. Morgan 0-2, Howard 0-3, but Howard has had an opportunity to be so close, but yet so far away from victory. One of the main factors in this game has to be Jerome Hutchinson. They were able to get him off to get the running game going. As a matter of fact, they sacrificed the, the, the throwing game, the passing game, to make sure that Hutchinson in the running game had some validity. And here's a here's Here's a critical note. 
Howard has given up 42 points this year in the fourth quarter thanks to turnovers. They've got a three-touchdown lead. A interesting to see if the Bears can put a couple of touchdowns on the board and force Howard into a situation where those skeletons start creeping up. I'm just wondering, will it, I I'd like to see how the Bison respond there. All right, we'll see. Second half action is just underway. Morgan State University taking on Howard. Howard has the lead 28 to 7. George Johnson is our sideline reporter. Mark Gray does play-by-play, -play, and I'm yours truly, Ronnie Duncan. I thought you were doing play-by-play. -play. Oh, I thought I was doing color. No, 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 no. That was last year. That was last year, yes. Okay. I'm doing play-by-play? -play? Things change, yes. You're the lead guy. We're, we're holding on to you. You're like, you're like the James T. Kirk of this ship. No, Scotty. Please. <laughs> I'm like the emotionless Vulcan. You got ears like... <laughs> Uh, we're just having fun. Just having fun on a Saturday afternoon, but this is the greatest part of it, black college football. And being a part of the MEAC for so long, watching MEAC college football, this is what it's all about. You're absolutely right. So now, Howard, I guess there must have been, I guess, a couple of penalties on this situation. Maybe Morgan was just a little offside. I'm anxious to see that because the ball was clearly kicked out of bounds, and then they moved it back 15 yards. I did not see the penalty. Well, back into the football game, starting at quarterback in the second half, Jorge Pena. Amazing. Because you know the Bison are going to tee off right now. And the give is to Ali Culpepper. Culpepper scrambles for about five yards on the play. Let's go downstairs to George Johnson with some more insight, George. Well, of course, over on Morgan State, the concern that they have right now is the fact that Howard University has come up with the big plays in the first half. In fact, they counted four big plays. So the number one objective for Morgan State is to stop Howard in the big plays that Bobby Towson can produce. They also expect on Morgan State's side to come out more this second half and throw the football. Watch for more play action. Watch for them to put the ball in the air. Back up to you guys. All right, George. We appreciate those comments. Ali Culpepper still with the ball, still on his feet. And we'll see where the ball is marked, but he's close to the first down. So the Bears still trying to take the pressure off the freshman quarterback, Pena. A little shocked that they didn't go to the more athletic Patterson, especially since Howard was a lot more aggressive at the end of the first half with their blitz packages and sending a number of guys um, off the off the ends. I would imagine Coach Mitchell was not very happy with the way Patterson dealt with time management on the clock. Patterson is back in the game right now. Pena is out. And I guess Coach says, if I'm going to win it, I may have to win it with my main guy, Castavius Patterson. Patterson under center. Bears in the eye formation to give the alley Culpepper. Culpepper goes up, and he looks like he has a first down. And that's impressive for the Bears because that's what they needed to get some positive yards in their first series. Starting much like they did in the first half, all the Bears trying to get Culpepper off. And he is being, I guess, Rashad Frazier, the cornerback that time, does a good job in support to come up and shut him down. Kevin Simmons, the fine wide receiver for Howard ever, has a sprained left knee. He is out for the game. We saw the picture of him earlier. Our crew was able to get him coming back from the locker room. It was obvious out of uniform, out of the game, but officially he's out of the game. Ali Culpepper still with the ball, and did you see the move? The tackle, Chad Scott, the cornerback, came up from his side and made sure that Mr. Culpepper got no more than about four yards. Boy, I hope we can get an ISO and watch a tremendous individual effort by Chad Scott. You talk about playing off a block, leaping the guy that's supposed to block you. Watch him. He's going to get out here. He played off the block. He went over Anthony Collins that time and just made a tremendous individual play. One name we haven't heard a lot of is Tracy White. He is one of their fine linebackers, outside linebacker, number 45 for the Bison. Gustavius Patterson back to pass. Patterson finds a man, and that's Mark Lester. Lester still on his feet, finally dragged down and had him by the shirt, and that was Chad Scott. Chad Scott once again showing he can not only make big plays and run support, but that time he got the big meat cleaver out there to haul uh, Lester down. 
Little half drop. This is a safe quarterback friendly pass because it's about a five yard catch and you let your guy like Lester just run and make things happen. If this was the day of the tearaway jersey, he might still be running. I tell you what, run after catch is very important. Maybe Morgan picked it up from FAMU. They do it well down there. Once again, first and ten from the 42 yard line. Patterson showing some movement. Patterson on the run. Patterson being chased. Patterson finds a receiver and that was Anthony Collins almost for a first down. But you see, that's the element of the game that Patterson gives that they don't have with Jorge Pena in the contest. You're Pena to the isn't wire. quick enough You're to get to the, to the outside. Wire. I talked about it earlier. 85 has a has a beat on him right now. Marcus Rogers, and then he just finds Collins, who's running a nice, safe route. They worked it to the near side. They came back with it to the far side of the field, and now How Howard has to be a little bit defensively off balance right now. Second and five for the Bears on the 38-yard line. Patterson to give to Alley Culpepper. Pepper. Culpepper showed tremendous balance on the play that was ugly from the beginning of the line of scrimmage. Culpepper gets peppered by Lamont Williams that time because he was supposed to go into one hole and try to reverse to find the other one, but there was nobody there but Rodgers. See, look, this play is designed to go in one direction. It's not there. Culpepper with the vision tries to get back to the outside. Big number 42. Pardon me. That was Lamont Williams to haul him down from the backside. Two backs in the backfield, Henry Vincent and Allie Culpepper. Gustavius Patterson goes to Allie Culpepper. Culpepper still on his feet. Culpepper looks like he's in the end zone, and he is stopped at around the five-yard line, finally brought down from behind by Tracy White. Folks, what a move. I mean, this guy had three defenders around him when he hauled the ball in, and he was able to freak them all. I mean, this is just an outstanding move. I mean, this guy gets out here in a quarterback-friendly route. It's safe. He's out there in the flat. All right, I'm your safety valve. Okay, now watch this move. Oops, excuse me. Excuse me again. Bye-bye. And it's off to the races deep down the near sideline, and he's hauled on from behind. That was just a sweet move where he took three players to school. All right, first. From the five, Culpepper is stopped. He gets about maybe a yard on the plate, if that much. And Boy, they were down by Brian McDonald. Defensive back came in from the backfield. Morgan is going to have to think about down inside the red zone. Probably another one of those short, uh, quick passes across the middle to either a back as a safety valve or one of the receivers coming out of the backfield because this is a tenacious front eight. I mean, this Howard University team has been able to get surge. They've been able to beat people off their blocks. So Morgan's going to have to try to cross them up. I'm not quite sure they can win a physical battle down here against the Bison. Second and goal, Ali Culpepper. Culpepper off to the side. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Morgan Bears. But we've got a late flag thrown in that dreaded area if you're a Bears fan of holding. So let's see. So it seems like Coach Mitchell, who's been talking about the mistakes that his young team consistently makes, and this is a team at Morgan that just simply quoting him, of course, does not know how to win, and we've got a holding call against the Bears. Take the six off. So unfortunate. Culpepper, an all-purpose back. You saw him there on the reception from Castavius, and that was 33 yards, and he was able to do most of that by himself, and then, unfortunately, had a touchdown call back because of holding. But that's that young offensive line for the Bears of Morgan State, but they're in hostile territory. Holding against the offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. You were talking uh, in a, on a previous play about receivers running after the catch at Florida A&M. I think you look throughout this league right now, there's some guys that do oh, an incredible up. amount of work after the catch. Second and 15. Patterson goes to Mark Lester. See, those are the passes I think that will be there inside the red zone. There's not a whole lot of room to work with, and when you don't have incredible foot speed on your defense well when you're inside the red zone that helps you out a great deal because you don't have to have as much ground to cover the quicker offensive players and I think this is a situation where Morgan has to start looking underneath if they're going to score here well play calling has been one that critics of Morgan State have really been upset about they feel like the play calling could be better I think in past years it was not as good as it is now Gustavius Patterson and in and out of the hands of Henry Vincent. Well, 
That was a little underneath play to a wide open receiver like Vincent, and he has to hold on to that ball. I mean, there's no fancy analysis here. I mean, play action fake, got pulled the defense to the center of the field. He yep. had nobody in front of him out there in the flat. It could have been six. But if ifs and buts were candies and nuts. Hey, Vincent basically a blocking fullback, had an opportunity to get into the highlights and blew his chance to be a star. Morgan kicking for the field goal here. Kicking for the Bears. Cameron Ashton. And the kick is good. So the Bears get back onto the scoreboard, making the score 28 to 10. We'll come back with much more of MEAC College Football Saturday after these words. Stadium, campus of Howard University in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. 28 to 10 is the score. The Bison of Howard University. And they'll be getting the ball back to do more damage on the Bears of Morgan. But well, one thing about it, you know it's a big game when you start seeing notable people around. And we've seen several notable people in here. Most notably the former mayor of uh, Washington, D.C., Marion Barry's in the house. So it must be a big game. Must be. Yeah. That was not the best judgment on fielding a kickoff. All so, right, Bobby Townsend is ready to throw his high-octane offense back in action. And there he is with his lovely wife enjoying himself on a lovely afternoon here in the nation's capital. Not exactly a chamber of commerce type of day with the overcast skies and the humidity. And there... Just to his right is the new acting athletic director of Howard University, Sandra Narell Thomas, who has been quite busy this week. First and 10 from the 22nd yard line. Bison in the I formation. Three wide receivers. Townsend with the give. To prove. Jay Colbert, that is. So Howard's picking up where they left off in the first half. Brian up in there on the stop once again, coming up from his defensive backfield position. And watch, watch this guy. Watch number four. Plays off a block, find the hole, and go right after the legs. That's what you got to do when, when <laughs> got to take the wheels off the cart to bring it down. Dark Rice for first down. I'm just marveling at the offensive play calling of Steve Wilson. Morgan's offensive coaches right now have got to be going, what is he going to do next? I mean, he started in the first half with a commitment to run. He beat him with big, deep plays. And then right here, you've got another back and Rice that you bring off the bench who they want to get the ball to. He will be a big part probably of their offensive attack in the second half because they will find a variety of ways to get number 22 touches of the football. Give to Rice. Rice turning. There's a flag on the play. Rice gets to the 46-yard line. And there was a flag on the play thrown at about the 35. There's some wholesale lobbying going on right there by big number 47, Aaron Roberts of Morgan. Stanley Mitchell looking on the sideline. Steve Wilson has to like what he sees, but hope for penalty isn't against the Bison. Well, he didn't like that call because I do believe it's going back against the Bison. Charles Williams is your referee this afternoon. Holding against the offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. When in doubt of where the flag is going, always go to Mark Gray, he will save the day. 28 to 10 is the score, 8.15 left to go in the third quarter. Are you a budding poet? We and I don't know it. <laughs> Ball on the 27. First and 25. Penalties you see there. And a fumble. This might be Morgan football. And that's Jamar Williams, number 22 for the Bears, who came up with the fumble recovery. 
and the Bears will get the ball first and 10 from the 20 yard line. And finally, the Bears contingent has something to smile about. This is Bobby Townsend. I'm not quite sure. Well, he loses his footing and a great play that time of stripping the ball from him that time by Cedric Jordan. And the ball falls loose, and it's a battle down in there. And now Morgan has a golden opportunity to get right back into this football game. We talked about it. Howard averaging 3.6 fumbles in their last three games. They've given up 42 points in the fourth quarter alone thanks to six fumbles in three games this season. They have been their own worst enemy. First and ten from the 20, Castavius Patterson. Patterson, play action. Patterson still with the ball. Patterson rotating. Patterson goes back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe picks up no more than a yard. <laughs> and he gets to <laughs> go meet some of his newfound friends. Boy, I tell you. Tracy White was right there. <laughs> Woo! You talk about the pursuit. So was Obi Ara, and that's the difference that Patterson gives Morgan when Pena's not in there. He was able to get out, out of the pocket. Ara was able to track Pena down in the first half from the backside, and I don't know. I'm not quite sure that wasn't a, a, a late hit. I mean, he looked like he had crossed over out of bounds. All it takes is one foot in college. All right, second and nine. Ball on the 19-yard line. Bears in the eye formation to give to Culpepper. Culpepper turning. Culpepper still on the seat. Culpepper into the end zone. Touchdown, Morgan. Bears, 19-yard touchdown by Mr. Ali Culpepper. And thanks to Henry Vinson, who helped kill the previous drive with a, dro a drop of a critical pass on third down. Vincent makes a huge block to spring Culpepper around the corner, and the Bears now find themselves with 11. Within 11, pardon me. And the Bear contingent coming all the way down from Baltimore is dancing a little something something right now. Ashton for the point after. And it's the blocked. kick is blocked. Did you believe that? There's a flag down. There's a flag on the play. Let's see what happens there because that could have been a two-point conversion. Vashante Chacron. Let's see what the officials rule. That ball is live after it is blocked. Now, I know it can, it can be advanced defensively into the opposition's end zone for a safety. I'm not quite sure whether or not the offense is able to uh, move the ball. Both coaches are puzzled about the final outcome of this call. Now, you know it wouldn't be D.C. without another filibuster. That's what they do in this town, Ronnie. Right? <laughs> they have discussions to discuss the discussions that they had previously. Illegal batting of a loose ball against the offense. 15-yard penalty. Try over. Wow. That's a strange call. That's one of those calls that the competition committee probably needs to take a look at. So let's see if Morgan will try a two-point conversion from this position or if they'll try another extra point attempt. It would be roughly a 35-yard field goal if they try the extra point. They're going with the two-point conversion because they've got their main guns in the game. They've got Anthony Collins, Mark Lester, Ahmed Walters, and Castavius Patterson. So Morgan is going for the two-point conversion. 28-16, 7-37. We haven't seen their tight end yet, and this will be a great opportunity for the Bears to invoke the tight end into the offense. Patterson being chased by Obi Ara. Patterson out of bounds. Two point conversion. Doesn't Obi Ara is quick. I mean, this guy is playing with a bad wheel. He's got a bum knee, and he's still able to wreak havoc, but not until Ali Culpepper scores a touchdown. The Bears are back within 12.
Mark Gray in the house along with Ronnie Duncan. Me at college football Saturday as the Morgan State Bears get ready to kick off. They have pulled themselves to within 12 at 28 to 16, Ron. And this is a situation where this young defensive unit has to be led by the veterans in the secondary. Morgan's strength on defense this season has been their secondary. People talk openly about the veterans that they have back there. They blew coverages in the first half that led to two big Howard scores. And that's why the Bison have this big lead. Jay Colbert on the give. Jay Colbert still on his feet. Finally brought down by Morgan. It, this is a physical game. Here's our national car rental scoring drive for the Morgan Bears. Just scoring once again. Town. You will see it all happened because of a fumble recovery. The Bears were able to recover the fumble. Leaving the door open for Ali Culpepper. 19-yard touchdown run. Ronnie, let's see if Howard will take the reins off of their uh, big play offense. They've had a lot of success attacking the Bears deep, and they kind of played conservative on their first couple of drives here in the second half. I think it's about time for the big time B-52 Bobby Townsend aerial assault. Once again, he was trying to go downfield in the general direction of his wide receiver, Jameel Jackson. Jackson had one touchdown early in the game, and he dropped another. This time, he had split the defenders. See, watch this. This is a post pattern. They're working the center of the field. They pick something up in the center. They're going right after Coleman to safety, and it, it, he had split the defenders. Just couldn't get to the ball. Better make it second and ten from the 34. Hutchinson just barreling over people, man. Man, Jerome Hutchinson shows some balance there. Boy, leaping people, bouncing off tacklers, and still able to pick up a first down yard. And it's the Morgan State University band. Now, I remember when I was in school, it was known as the Magnificent Marching Machine. What they call it when you were back there? Or did they have a band? Were you guys like doing a halftime show with like, I don't know, teletype or something? It was a band. It was? It was a band, Mark. Was it like a drum and bugle corn? No, or no, was no. It? Let, now, let's watch Hutchinson right here. He, he will go through a day's work on this one run to pick up a couple of yards. Barreling off, that's three, four, five people got a piece of him before he just missed picking up a first down. You know, it's all, coaches will tell you, keep those legs moving. Keep those legs moving. And defensive <laughs> coaches tell their players to, you know, if you want to stop the car, got to clip the wheels. And Bobby Townsend has been borderline flawless this afternoon. I'm not quite sure you can think of any mis glaring mistakes that he's making. We've got some AX scores coming your way. Liberty beating Dell State. Liberty was down by 14 points in that game. Hampton up on top of Southern Utah by a touchdown as Howard picks up the first down. And we've got Hampton next week from Dover, Delaware. It's Hampton and Dell State on the MEAC College Football Saturday. Get a chance to see Mr. Matthews, Mr. McCant to get the record setting Mr. Rashawn Matthews. And Albert Horsey, who one of, who's one of those kind of receivers that not a whole lot of people are talking about when you think about the likes of uh, Jockway Nunley, but that kid's big, he can run, and he runs after the catch. I got the feeling he'll be in somebody's camp next season. So do I, Mark. First and 10 from the 46 for the Bison. Townsend back oh, another, pass. Fumble. another fumble, and it's recovered. Howard got it back. Howard right? got it back. A blitz from the far side. I think Roberts is the one who's going to come off the corner. Well, check that. That's Dunaway Patton. almost came away with the fumble recovery from, Mo from Look Morgan. At Coming from your right. Uh, That's number 53. He's the first to land on the ball, but it gets away from him. The configuration of the football, boy, it'll do some crazy things. And that's probably the reason the Bears weren't able to haul that one in. Morgan with an aggressive, playing more aggressive, I should say, with the front seven here to start the second half. We, I don't think we saw a blitz from the Bears' defense in the first half, and they recognize you can't let Townsend sit back in the pocket and just survey all afternoon. Rice is open down the near side. Micah Ramsour with the pickoff, Ronnie. 
from Baltimore's Walbrook High. And you know who went to Walbrook? Who? Mark Gray. <laughs> yes, indeed. So Ram Sewer with a big play. And suddenly, old man Mo is wearing orange and blue. Once again, the turnovers play a key role in this game. Now, see, Ta uh, Townsend has all day to look, and he had Rice out there, and this is just a bad pass. He was short with it. And Ram Sewer just climbs the ladder and makes a catch. A little bit more trajectory, maybe two or three degrees. But now Howard has three TOs. Morgan has none. And that's why Morgan is still in this game right now, Ronnie. I mean, they all come in the second half of this football game. That's the most important factor for the Bears. The Bears playing with a bit of a spark. Sometimes you can switch quarterbacks, and there can be a trickle-down effect, if you will. And the trickle-down in intensity is clearly on the Bears' sidelines right now. Paul Pepper gets about three yards on the play. Boy, these two guys are two hard running backs. Ali Culpepper and Jermaine Hutchinson are just tough runners. I don't think if this whole game we've seen either one of the backs, Culpepper for Morgan or number 34, Hutchinson for Howard, go down after the initial hit. I mean, it's stuff you just can't teach guys. And the vision of Culpepper, his feet just continue to move it. Just toughness. I mean, these two guys are really impressive. When you talk about 80 yards for Culpepper already, averaging three and a half yards only, which is just off, well, which is a little bit more than he's been averaging for a game. Ahmed Walters on his feet. Depending on where the ball is spotted, it may have been enough for a first down. Sometimes you give a quarterback a week to sit and mope and think about all the mistakes that he's made. And I think what we're seeing right now is Custavius Patterson took some time to look at himself. This is a confident pass. Three-step drop, quick out, finds his receiver, and he delivers a strike. I mean, the balls have a purpose to him. He seems like he's up under the center right now, and he's looking to make some things happen where Jorge Pena was kind of feeling his way. First and ten for the 48 for the Bears. And that, my friends, is a two-hop grounder that's just a bit outside. <laughs> he had his receiver. He had Anthony Collins right there. But again, you know, fundamentals are so critical at this level. And, you know, you got a freshman coming in who's so used to just... I guess getting by at the high school and JUCO level with his athleticism, and that was a technique situation. The receivers were open. They had split the coverage. They had found the seam in the zone. Patterson just made a bad pass. Second and 10 for the Bears at the 48. Patterson with the two backfield. Goes to Culpepper. Culpepper still on his feet. Culpepper for a first down inside the 40. And I'm going to tell you something. There was a receiver out there. I believe that was Brandon Finney who threw a block to seal somebody. And that's why Culpepper was able to get to the outside to pick up the first down. Watch a block come up right here. That's a great seal effort that time. Check that. Armand Walters with a great block to open up a lane to give Culpepper an opportunity to pick up another first down. Anthony Collins wide to the right. That was Tracy White on the hip of Mark Lester. My goodness. I'm sure his mama felt that one. Oh, man. If that's the case, his mama's home. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are two guys who just got intimately familiar with one another. This is a violent collision between two young men. Wow. Shoulder pad and helmet. Got it all. Tracy White, they say he is all that in a bag of chips. Well, that's why That's why he's wearing coach's number. Hit, hits like that. <laughs> and a little bit of confusion offensively for Morgan, and the Bears have to burn a timeout. We've got a timeout in the action. We'll come back with much of this game. It's heating up Morgan and Howard. Second, you better not leave this game now. 324. And it was a first half in which Howard put 28 points on the board. Morgan only had seven. But since then, the Bears have come a-rolling.
28-16 is the score we have right now, and that's the main reason. Castavius Patterson, the quarterback for the Bears. Bears in the I formation. Second down and five yards to go on the 33-yard line. Patterson back to pass. Patterson going up deep. Patterson finds a receiver. Mark Lester, touchdown, 33 yards for the Morgan Bears. With all due respect to people who are under six feet tall, that's the difference between a guy that's 6'3 at the helm of the quarterback position and a guy that's 5'10. He just stood right behind that line, set in the pocket like a matador, lost a strike over the defender. Two defenders are out there in coverage, and this is a perfect pass. A tremendous pass, but even a better catch by Mark Lester. Mark, I talked about it at the beginning of this game, and I remember talking to you and members of the crew saying, look out for the Morgan receivers. I saw them last week. They are explosive and maybe the best core receivers in the MEAC this season. Anthony Collins, Mark Lester, and Ahmed Walters, they just simply get the job done time after time. But well, once a time, the Morgan State Bears need more time to get their heads together. And that's number two that they've taken in the second half and remember, they're still trailing on the road. Sometimes it takes so much out of a team coming back that they don't have enough to come back in the fourth quarter and finish the deal. This comeback has been a great confidence-building comeback for the Bears, but it's cost them two timeouts here in the third quarter. And I got to tell you something, that's huge right there, Ronnie. It's great on the scoreboard right now, but if it comes down to a last drive type of situation when you got young freshman linemen and you've got a freshman quarterback, you're going to need those timeouts. So sometimes the Bears looking for something to cheer about have tendency to lose their comp believe it or not this game is so exciting folks are this is the friendly confines of black college football from your dorm room you can hang out on the yard who knows what's going on in there and then you check out the game that's quality stuff right there well, it's a beautiful campus, Howard University. If you're ever in the nation's capital, come on by. Come on campus. Friendly people all the time. We were here for homecoming last season, and that was an event within itself. <laughs> oh, boy. Howard University in the nation's capital. Not hard to find. Not hard to get to. A little bit difficult to get out of, but the Bears get the extra point. Point out there's good by the Morgan Bears, and we have a football game, Mark Gray. 28-23 is our score. Morgan only down by five at halftime, and it looked bleak. But we talked about what Morgan had to do to get going. If there's one person that's upset right now, it's Steve Wilson of the Howard Bison, their head coach, because Stanley Mitchell has called all the right plays at all the right times. Well, this has been a second half that has been based on Bobby Townsend not being able to hold on to the football. The aggressiveness of the Morgan front seven has basically confused him, and they are doing a poor job of protecting Townsend. Now let's get ready to go back down the field to George Johnson, who's working the sideline who has another interesting member. George? All right, standing with me right now is a former defensive end with Howard University, Cheryl Ogden. You might be familiar with the name. First, we start off, though, with your days playing defensive end and remembering this stadium, taking you way back when they used to have nothing but dirt in the middle of this play. In fact, George, we called it the Dust Bowl. It's what it was known <laughs> as both here and everywhere else. Now, of course, you come to every football game because one of your sons, Marcus, is on the offensive line at the right tack. Correct, George. Uh, you know, and I get to see my son play and get to support my alma mater. Two good things at one time. And then, of course, we take you another step. A guy that Marcus can lean on for some advice, and that's his older brother, Jonathan Ogden, maybe the best offensive tackle in the National Football League. Well, I'm, I certainly am prejudiced, and I think it's, I don't, can't think of any better than he is. But as a parent, it's really a joy to be able to see both your children do well and enjoy themselves. You know, i got to ask you, you know, when we watch a football game, it's so hard for me to focus in on the offensive line. I guess you've grown accustomed to being able to focus in on the line, but do you catch everything else that's going on on the field? Well, you know, after you watch this sport for so many years, you start to kind of realize what's going on. So I've got it uh, capable of watching both of them and watching what goes on also. Well, you watch the National Football League, you watch college football, talk a little bit about this Howard program, which you see each and every week. What kind of changes, what direction are they moving in right now? Oh, I think Steve has certainly got them moving in the right direction. As I compare and contrast uh, when I was here, I was one of the first classes that he offered scholarships to. Thank <laughs> you.
now most of these kids are on scholarship and they've got programs to work out in. Steve is definitely taking it in the right direction. Cheryl Ogden, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. All right, Cheryl Ogden, the father of Marcus Ogden and Jonathan Ogden of the Baltimore Ravens. Back up to you guys. Well, you see him there, number 71, Cedric Scott, defensive tackle for the Bears. One of the main reasons the Bears have been able to contain Howard on this drive. This has been a game of contrast and styles. This has been a game of ebb and flow. Yes. This has been a game of excsitement, and you said it best, Mark Gray. When it's a rivalry, the Throw. best in the fighters always come out. Exactly. It's like Allie and Frazier. Somebody has got to go down. And now out of the shotgun, Townsend once again will have to try to make a big play. But they're short of the first. Well, they got a lot of the yardage that they lost back. Picked up about six on that play that time, Ronnie. Sean Miller was the receiver and made the great catch. You'll see the fluid arm of Bobby Townsend and Sean Miller. If he hadn't slid down, we'd be talking about that was a shoestring catch. He picked that one right up off the Green Stadium turf. An outstanding individual effort that time. Well, that's a classic case of receivers staying with mm -hmm. his quarterback and the quarterback staying with the receiver. I am really impressed with the number of skilled players I've seen in this game already. And that was Javante Philpock. However, on coverage for Morgan was Sam Massey, and Sam played it perfect. But there is a flag on the play. I want to hope I'm wrong, but I think they're going to call pass, pass interference. Let's watch it again right here. Townsend setting up in the pocket, delivers a strike that time, and let's see. Whoa, where was the hole? Holding, defense, just eligible receiver, 10 yards, automatic, first down. If that was the play, it looked pretty tight to me. I just got a tape from Johnny Greer, who happens to be <laughs> right. the chief of the league officials for the MEAC. And we were going over through a series of plays of what is a foul in a situation like that. And that looked like it was a clean defensive play. Certainly did from this vantage point. But now the Bears have got to bite down on the bullet just a little bit. See, look at him showing blitz. And a great block. Well, we're going to have pass interference against Morgan. But my question is, was that a catchable ball? There was definitely some contact way down the field outside of the five-yard uh, chuck zone, and I think Morgan's going to get burned, and that's why Coach Stanley Missile is a little bit heated. And Steve, Steve Wilson is concerned right now to see whether or not the officials are going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So suddenly, Charles Williams and the crew of officials are having a busy afternoon. And as you can see, Coach Mitchell is extremely exercised and I'm not quite sure he's satisfied with the explanation. Against defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that's another first down for the Bison of Howard, taking advantage of the mistakes by Morgan. Is this a catchable pass, Ronnie? I don't think so. I think that, that ball is about 10 yards out of the direction of the, the defender or receiver. I have to agree with you there, Mark. Hey, 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 hey. Sorry about that, folks. That's some laundry that you need to keep in the back pocket. Boy, look at these penalty totals. We're, we're fast approaching the 150-yard uh, mark between the two teams. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Bobby Townsend going up deep again. There is a great battle developing right now between Michael Ramsour from Baltimore and Jonathan Brewer, the sophomore receiver from Howard. It's just one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's out there locked up, and it's a fly pattern where he's going after his receiver. There's nothing fancy about this. You just get past the guy. I'm going to lay it up out there for you to go get it. And Ramsour does a great job in coverage, got his hips around, was able to run stride for stride, and that's why that play goes for nothing. What I like about Brewer is that he's relentless. He's going to go after that ball in mm -hmm. each and every opportunity. He knows right now that he's got the officials looking on his side. Hutchinson with the football inside the 30-yard line. Hutchinson stopped at around the 27. Nice delay play call that time. It's a draw play. And you know something? When you've got big number 34 bearing down on you, it took all 
of Justin Thomas's uh, wherewithal to think about coming up and putting up a stick. He thought about it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. He's coming around the corner to make that play. He might have gotten there five or six seconds early, but he thought about that Big Mac truck wearing number 34, so he tiptoed up to bring him down. Jermaine Hutchinson, number 34, wearing the number. And Mary Nuss of Walter Payton. I'm telling you what, man, he's had a lot of work to do today. Hutchinson still on his feet. Hudson inside the 25, stopped at about maybe the 24 yard. And we've got some more laundry. I'm just wondering, is this a hold this time against Howard? Thrown by the referee. Normally that does indicate holding. And that is your call. So the Bears have helped Howard out with a couple of big pass interference penalties, questionable though they may be, that have helped him out on this drive. And now Howard returns the favor, if you will, by a holding call that'll bring up a first down and 20 situation. Boy, penalties are, are, are adding up. This is the offense. 10-yard penalty with the first down. Wish I, my stocks were doing this well. I can tell you this. This is an important drive for the Bison of Howard University to regain momentum in the second half. Let's take a look. Watch yep. the full-fledged WWF takedown. That works for Vince McMahon. It does not work in the media. That was Hopkins, number 79, and uh, maybe he does have a future in the WWF. We'll see. Or the XFL, <laughs> one and the same. Hey, both up and pay. Townsend, Townsend under attack. Townsend had to get rid of that football because he was being in hot pursuit by Ian Hale. Boy, Hale got through there that time. He just blasted somebody at the point of attack and came through basically unabated. And he had Townsend, even with his six foot six inch frame, he really couldn't see over the defender. He had gotten that much push. This is the nobody wants to lose ball. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> because Howard comes in at 0-3. It's a home game. Morgan comes in 0 and 2. You see Hale into your picture. There he is. You see Townsend was going back. He said, "Hello, big fella. Don't come after me. Hold tight. I ain't got the ball no more." <laughs> so now we're going to look at Howard in a situation where they have like first and 30. And they've been in a situation like this before, and they have come back to strike Morgan upside yep. the head in yep. the end zone. Steve Wilson is an offensive genius. If anyone can draw up a play, it's Mr. Wilson. Well, here's the deal. It comes down to the skilled players of Howard against the defensive backs of Morgan right now. That's where this game is, what this game has evolved into. Jermaine Hutchinson. Jermaine still on his feet. Jermaine crosses the 40-yard line, but it's not enough for a first down. Caught the Bears in a bit of a zone coverage that time. They were looking past. Linebackers were ready to drop back. Once he exploded through the hole, they, the linebackers had to turn around and find out where Hutchinson was. Look, they're dropping back. They're expecting pass. But again, he's able to find himself a hole, barrel into the secondary, pick up a first, well, pick up a lot of yards. Jermaine Hutchinson still on his feet. There in the defense for Morgan was Cedric Scott, number 71. Having a fine game is Cedric Scott. Stepping up, playing a very, very solid game for the Bears. We're going to be back with the fourth quarter of this exciting game, Morgan and Howard. This is me at College Football Saturday today. Game. 15 minutes remain, 28-23. I'm telling you, I knew we were going to have an exciting game because of what this game has meant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, having been a product of Morgan State right. University, watching Morgan and Howard play for so many years, I knew this game was built on emotion, and that's what football is played on, emotion as well. Let's go downstairs to George Johnson. George, what you got for me, big fella? I got to tell you something, buddy. Down here, you can see on one side of the field, obviously, Morgan State grabbing a hold of momentum and saying, let's go. But it's very interesting looking at the Howard side of this football field because you've got a couple of heads down, you've got some guys with some looks on their faces like they are stunned that this club has gotten back into it. Also, you're wondering if this club is not playing to, you know, to lose this football game as opposed to going out and winning it with some of the calls. We'll keep you in touch with what's going on on this side of the football field, but back up to you guys for now. George, you're absolutely right. You know, the momentum is clearly 
on the Bears' sideline right now. And, and, and look at the third down conversions. Howard, three of seven. Morgan, six of ten. This is huge. Third and long. I wouldn't be shocked to see them find a, finally try to find a way to get Rice the football. Pass incomplete. Intended for Jackson. You get the feeling that they're missing Kevin Simmons just a little bit? No, they're missing more than Kevin Simmons. No, 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 that's the clutch guy. That's the that's the money receiver. And when, when your quarterback doesn't have his money guy, it alters the dynamic of what they're trying to do. And I really think that blow to Kevin Simmons right now is beginning to hurt the Bison in this contest. Howard ready to punt. However, you never know. You could find some trickery. Yep. This is Steve Wilson's offense, and they want that first down. You have, no matter what happens, Morgan really should take a lot of confidence out of this game. They've shown the ability to come back on the road. The punt is up. And Great it's going to take a nice Howard bounce inside the five-yard line. We're going to come back with much more of this game. Don't go anywhere. It's Morgan Howard. Be at College Football Saturday. This is a football game that is on the historic elements of the MEAC. MEAC College Football. The Morgan Bears and the Howard Bison. They started back in 1889 and still playing today in the year 2000. And boy, are they. What a phenomenal second quarter by the Bison. They are up for 21 points. What a tremendous uh, quarter by the Bears in the third, who are up for 16 points. So, boy, this is just a battle. This is what college football is all about right here. And look at the pack move backward as Ali Paul Culpepper runs into the center of it. That sound that looks to me like a back who's still pretty fresh, maybe getting stronger. And a sign of the defensive unit who's been out there a good deal of the second half, maybe getting just a little tired. Not a cold day, not a hot day. It's humid though. And that's where that's what saps your strength. The surge was there for Ali Culpepper. I talked to him this summer. And I said, Ali, we're going to be doing that game. Howard Morgan, he says, I will show up. He sure it's did. It's a TV game. It's prime time. He says, Mr. Duncan, I will be there. He called you Mr. Duncan, huh? Well, you know, I, I guess I earned it at 42 mark. <laughs> I'm not calling you Mr. Duncan. I knew you when you were Put it this way. <laughs> Ali Culpepper could date my daughter. You can't, okay? <laughs> now, what, what are you saying? Dead ball. You're too old. Part <laughs> the snap. Delay game. Against the offense. Five yard penalty remains second down. You mean you're not like Mike Krzyzewski? I'm not Tommy Amaker? Come on. No. Oh. I'm going to tie. You can spell Duncan. I've heard, I don't know if you can spell <laughs> Krzyzewski. All right. 13 uh, 56 remaining. And we've got a second and nine. 28 23. Howard on top of Morgan. Bears on the five yard line. Gustavius Patterson back in the end zone looking for a receiver. He finds a receiver, and that's a Morgan first down, and that is Mark Lester. Boy, that's a fantastic play. That's a creatively designed play where you have Lester coming across in one direction, Collins going up underneath him, and that confusion in the center of the field is what opens it up for the receiver to make this big catch. See the confusion? It's a crossing route where the receivers cross in front of one another, and Lester picks up the first down. That's a, that's a well-designed play that was executed at a critical time effectively and now the Bears have to have a lot of confidence right now. Brian McDonald, strong safety for the Bison in on the tackle. First and 10 from the 21. Allie Culpepper still with the ball. The one thing you have to like about Culpepper is the way he protects the football. Yep. And the way that he, he sees the hole, he hits the hole, and there's not a whole lot of thinking about it. I mean, this guy has great vision, and it's like when his eyes see something, he's able to go right to it. Let's take a look at our targets scoreboard. And as you see, Liberty is beating Delaware State 25-14. In the second quarter, Southern Utah and Hampton are tied. And later tonight, what a game. It's going to be FAMU and Tennessee State. And you've got Bethune-Cookman taking on Morris Brown at 7. And North Carolina A&T taking on Elon. Second and six, ball on the 24-yard line. Castavius Patterson showing a little ad living. Goes to Mark Lester. Lester across the 40, the 45. He may have stepped out of bounds first, though. Lester may have stepped out of bounds. I think that's why that flag may have been thrown. Let's see. And once your receiver steps out of bounds, he becomes an ineligible receiver, and that might be the dilemma there. We'll 
There's the flag on the sideline. And it happened right in front of Coach Steve Wilson. So you know he wasn't going to let that one get by. Yep. Unsportsmanlike. What is that, an unsportsmanlike conduct call? Illegal touching okay. of the ball by an old school receiver who went out of bounds and came back in first to touch the ball. It's a loss of down, previous spot. Third down. Not a mental mistake, just a mistake in judgment. But a big mistake because mm -hmm. it is a loss of down. So that will make it third down for the Bears. But it was a nice play by Patterson that time to freelance and buy himself some time. You know, the freelance ability of Patterson has definitely been the difference in the second half. Taking nothing away from Pena, he was able to get Morgan to the point where they could attack, of course, Howard. But it's been Castavius Patterson that has been the difference in this football game for the Bears. Patterson looking back to pass, having plenty of time. Patterson still on his feet. Patterson sees a receiver. And it was knocked down, and there are no flags. And Anthony Collins was looking for pass interference, and I didn't see it, Anthony. Plead your case somewhere else, because Judge Judy does not <laughs> reside here today. Well, this is a pass that, frankly, shouldn't have been thrown. It's a freshman trying to force something, and two years from now, if he's still here, he won't make that throw. That was, a, that was an ill-advised pass, and, you know, fortunate for Bear fans that it was just deflected and not picked off because he had one white shirt trying to attack three blue shirts, and that white shirt ain't Randy Moss. Eddie Henry is set to punt for the Morgan Bears. Set to receive, Torek Rice. Henry's punt is up. And it's going to take a funny bounce. And finally stopped at around about the 46-yard line. We'll be back with much more of Morgan and Howard on Me at College Football Saturday. All right. The faces of optimism on one side, faces of frustration on the other. 28-23, the Bison and the Bear. Well, this is where a senior like Bobby Townsend has to get in his auto, look his players in the face, and say, yo, fellas, we're at home, we're up by five, we're supposed to be beating this guys, let's go get, get it done. Townsend with the give to Jay Colbert. He's worked down for a gain of about two. Howard still staying on the ground. They've been extremely effective, a lot more effective than they have been all season on the ground game today. But, and, and, and frankly speaking, in the second half, they've had their moments. Big number Sc Scott right there and there on the shot as well. But you got to really like Howard's ability to get deep on Morgan. The question is, can Townsend continue to get the ball down there right now? Vincent Nichols is back in the game for the Howard Bison. Bison in the I formation. Ho! Patrick Dunaway. Dunaway was definitely in on that play. I don't know if he recognized something by his film session or whether he beat the snap count or whether he and Bobby Townsend are boys, but watch big number 53. Somebody just missed an assignment. I think when you look down, when they go back and look at the film, the center on that particular play, Iodele Harrison just flat out missed the block, and that left it open for Donaway to come through there. The Louisiana native who made the long trek to Morgan State comes through with a huge play. That is good football. That was a tremendous move. You talk about class being open. Massey got taken to school that time, and maybe Howard is going to be just a little short. Yes, they, no, he's just a little short of the first down. See, safe route. Look at this move coming up right here. Oh, just shook him out of his shoes. That was Jay Colbert on the move. You were talking, that puts Howard back in a punting situation. You were talking about Howard thinking about a fake punt the last time? This might be a great time for it. Think about it. You know, got about 10 minutes to go in the game. You're near midfield. Got to feel some semblance of confidence in your defense. So if it doesn't work out, I think they'll take a, a delay of game penalty to give them about five more yards, and they'll try to pooch kick it, though. So I think that'll probably end all hopes of uh, Howard trying to fake. Five-yard penalty. It remains 
fourth down. So Howard has definitely left a crack in the door. <coughs> I'm just wondering right now if the Bears are mature enough. You know, in talking to Coach Mitchell at practice and the people associated with the Bear program, they say this is a team that does not know how to win. If they can find a way to get a win in a tough ball game, it may change the whole direction of this season and the program. Hunt is up. T.J. Stallings back to receive it. Stallings still on his feet. Stallings gets beyond the 20-yard line at around about the 23. We're going to come back with much more of this exciting game. 9.46 remaining. It is 28-23. Howard over Morgan. And welcome back to MEAC Football, 946 left here in our fourth quarter. Howard leads by five points. I was just on the Morgan State side, and I got to tell you, offensively, they think they can attack this Bison defense, especially with the pump fake. Watch for the fake and watch for the pass over the middle. They've been talking among the quarterbacks and saying the safety is biting every time. We'll see if they can execute that on this drive. Back up to you guys. And, Ronnie, you and I were talking about that very same thing in the break. It looks like Howard's defense is not adjusted to what more uh, Morgan is doing right now and they look a little bit confused where Morgan in the second quarter was reacting Howard's defense is now reacting instead of initiating things and that's a strange turn of events on their home stadium in the fourth quarter the size matters when you start looking at the size of the Morgan wide receivers of Anthony Collins and Mark Lester six feet and above you start looking at the DBs for Howard 510 59 this is Culpepper again Oh. Pepper is going to find some daylight. Call Pepper at the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. Inside the 50-yard line, stopped at around about the Howard 48. There, there are certainly things you can teach a quarterback, and then there's some things on heart. Let's look at the, well, I guess we're going to see the heart of Call Pepper, but you're going to see some heart in his quarterback leading him like a great guard does. Now, first off, look at him. Break a tackle of Obi Ra. Reverse his field. Get back to the near side and who's leading the charge number seven the quarterback Culpepper nice move there breaks a tackle and then all the way from his linebacker position coming way down the field is Tracy White living up to the lofty accolades of his coach wearing his number but Ali Culpepper is having a huge game I talked to him before the game about his career how frustrating a talented player like him has had to go through by not having a quality offensive line he says yeah I have been discouraged sometimes but I'm in it to win it today interesting story about Ali Culpepper and coach Stanley Mitchell their union at Morgan State right. goes beyond Morgan mm -hmm. State Stanley coached this kid to a national championship in Pop Warner football. That's how close they are. And it's more like father-son than coach and player. I'll go one better. He was also a part of Stanley Mitchell's first two championship teams. Well, teams that played in the championship game for the Maryland State title. They lost one year. They came back one the following year. You know who was on defense for that crew at Dunbar? Tommy Polly, an All-American defensive lineman at Florida State as well. Here's our U.S. Airways quarterback comparison and UC Castell as Patterson has come on for 116 yards. And there he is running the football, showing his versatility. Picks up about six yards on the play. Well, that's just field generalship right there. Fake like you're going to run a dive. That's going to pull everybody into the center of the field and let your big, fast, physical quarterback get to the outside. And, yeah, that's worthy of something to dance about, fellas. Watch this. Great ball fake. Seals everybody. They, they See, everybody moves to the inside. So everybody's looking inside for the running back because Culpepper had done so much work on the previous play and then Patterson gets outside. When he turns that corner, as big as he is, he becomes a weapon. And to make it second and five on the 43-yard line. Patterson play action. Patterson on the run. Obi a rise there. Patterson throws it out of bounds. Boy, that was a heads-up decision by him that time, and the senior with an outstanding job. Obi Ava is just having an incredible game. That time, the pressure from the backside, you're talking about a big linebacker who really is a defensive end from a schematic standpoint, coming from the opposite side of the field to track down a quick quarterback, and this playing with a bum knee. I'm going to tell you, the Howard defense has been going from the east to the west, and they are getting tired. They, they do look like they're laboring just a little bit. Guys with hands on their hips right now. OBA rise out of the game. He's bending over on the sideline. Yeah, 
Third and five. Patterson still with the ball. Patterson in all kinds of trouble. Patterson dumps it off. And that could have easily possibly been a grounding play. Well, I think he had Vincent out there in the general area, so that's why it doesn't go for grounding. But a great defensive adjustment that time by Howard, able to get some pressure on Patterson and totally discombobulate the Bears' drive. A, a, a drive, I might add, that showed some promise early on with the running plays, but it was kind of interesting. But Mr. Howard, Culpepper was uh, absent over the last two, three plays. Howard was relentless in this mm -hmm. attack. I mean, they continue to move it down on Castavius Patterson. First, uh, you know, that's the first time of, uh, we've seen some aggressiveness from the HU defense uh, in the second half. It's like they've been playing just a little bit as though they're intimidated by the uh, versatility of Patterson up under center. Punt is up. And we down the punt. We've got much more of MIAC College Football Saturday, Morgan and Howitt, 28-23. New York College Football Saturdays 2000 is sponsored in part by USPS, Nike, Xerox, Target, Coca Cola, US Marine Corps, New Urban Entertainment, Greyhound, Whitnauer. National Car Rental, and U.S. Airways. We're back in live action, 831 remaining in this football game, and what a rivalry in a game we have seen, a game of halves, where Howard, unfortunately, has turned the ball over in the second half. Morgan has taken advantage of the opportunities, but Bobby Townsend is still back there as the quarterback for the Bison, and you know he can turn it on at any given time. Javante Philpock is in the game. You've got Jonathan Brewer, the two wide receivers, out wide, and they're in the I formation. It's a carry with pain, but a game. Vincent Nichols. Our next game for me at College Football Saturday will be next week in Dover, Delaware, Alumni Stadium. That's when we will take our first look at Joe Taylor's Hampton University Pirates and they, against the Delaware State Hornets. And they've got a freshman from here in this area, Otavius Cash, who, I'll tell you something, just in the little bit of film I've seen on Joe Taylor's show, looks like he's an incredible athlete. He may be able to pick up when all is said and done where Roy Johnson left off. And, of course, a bunch of record-setting offensive players at Delaware State. Howard still with the football. Whole host of Bears in there on the tackle that time. I believe that was number 22 in there on the carry. Vincent Niklos, a sophomore out of Hendersonville, North Carolina. So Steve Wilson able to go back down around his crib, so to speak, and pick up a, a, a bunch of talent. You look at these two, you look at how it's rostered. <laughs> they recruit from all parts of the country. You look at the Bears roster, they're pretty much a Northeastern, Southeastern oriented team with the exception of a couple of players like Pena. Fourth quarter has been an Achilles heel for Howard in terms of turning the football over. Second and three. Wilkos gets the first down, and he is continuing inside the 45. Well, Ronnie, you talk about somebody needing to step up as a unit. That's what the Howard offensive line is doing right now. Look at this surge at the point of attack, man. They just blast people, and that just gives the back an opportunity to find a hole and arm tackling going on for the Bears right there. But then once he's into the secondary, he is off to the races. So that's just an outstanding job at the point of attack by the offensive line. And then the back recognizes he as a hole, explodes through and into the secondary. He is hard to be brought down. You're in Bobby Townsend country. 43 is where the ball is laid. First and 10. He goes again for another first down. That is two first downs in a row. He has come into this game and made a difference for Howard where they could not run the ball with any efficiency. He has been the man. Vincent continues to raise high praise. And, but you got to give credit to the O-line once again. I don't know if the big defensive front of Morgan is getting a little tired right now, but they are just getting blasted at the point of attack. 
guys are basically uh, arm tackling and throwing their shoulders into players and not trying to lock anybody up right now. Those are uh, signs of fatigue, but Niklos is hurt right now, so back into the contest for Howard goes Hutchinson, but Niklos gave him a nice lift. Now Hutchinson can come back after an extended breather and be just as fresh. That would be a tremendous loss because this young man, Niklos, was a tremendous spark for the Bison. Jermaine Hutchinson with the ball, but he continues to roll over people, and See? Hutchinson can continues the roll and how it has regained the momentum it is obvious you can see it on the football field well the big nasties up front are getting it done for HU right now they're just blasting people three four yards off the line of scrimmage at the point of attack and now Hutchinson who's had a chance to catch a breather is able to leap into the secondary and pick up eight yards up close near another first down I'm almost sure there's a saying maybe Gary Moore to tell the truth mm -hmm. will the real HU please stand up <laughs> please stand uh, I thought that sounded like Eminem no, to tell the truth. Oh, okay. It's an old television show. Real old, before cable, right? This is Hutchinson again. And another Howard first down. And this is an impressive drive by one of the teams in the league that's supposed to be in the upper tier. When they've had to have it, their offensive line has just stepped up and done a great job. You know, everybody will talk about the effectiveness of the backs on this drive. This has been a textbook drive of offensive line play, just blasting each other. And I think the Bears have to waste their last time out for a defensive stop here. Because Coach Mitchell knows if Howard scores here, he can just about cancel Christmas this afternoon. All right, that'll be first and seven, and it'll be to the goal, and look at Jermaine Hutchinson. I just want to say that he was out there in the secondary, and there were a bunch of linemen that were laying on the field, and that has to have Coach Mitchell concerned right now, trying to get in his coach. Coach trying to get in his players' faces right now, trying to give them a list. This is the last time that he'll have to talk to this team. He doesn't have any more timeouts, and they've got to find a way to shut down the HU running game all of a sudden. But here's the deal. Howard is in a real good position right now. The Achilles heel for them all season has been holding on to the football. And, and, and you got to think that if you're a Howard fan right now, maybe, just maybe, if there's a chink to worry about on this drive, it's them holding the football. Well, they've held on so long on this drive, successful drive, first down, ball on the seven, and all they have to do is march it in seven yards for another Howard Bison touchdown. 5.49 remaining in the game. Quarterback, Bobby Townsend. Townsend to give to Hutchinson. Hutchinson turns the corner. MEAC, you later. It's a touchdown for the Bison. But we've got some uh, laundry on the field in the middle that was thrown by the referee, and this one could be coming back. I think we may have holding in the middle of the HU offensive line, and that might cost him a TD. Let's see. Yep. I couldn't see where the hole was, but as soon as the referee, whose responsibility is to pretty much watch the quarterback, if he sees something in his face, chances are it's holding. And that is a huge call. Seems like every time I come to Howard University, I get nothing but an excellent football game. Holy. I think back to last year. Against the offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down. Their game against South Carolina State, their game against FAMU, all exciting football action here on the campus of Howard University in Green Stadium. And the fans are enjoying it too. You know, Morgan does not play any home games with the exception of their homecoming, which is played at the Raven Stadium. So many of their fans are here today watching them for the first time this season. The reason why they're constructing a new stadium on the campus of Morgan State University. Jermaine Hutchinson with the give. Hutchinson still has it, has the ball, and he gets down around about the nine-yard line inside the ten. Howard has Jermaine figured it out. Hutchinson. They're getting the the running backs to the outside. The sweet plays are just working so effectively right now because the quickness and pursuit that the Bears linebackers had in the first half and pretty much in the third quarter, they're a half step slower now. And Patton is laying down on the field right now. Looking like he's just exhausted. I couldn't see. Looks like he's, he, he might be just winded right now. Justin Patton. Big time contributor on the defense for the Bears. Linebacker. And they're calling in the medic team. You know, the change of life for Coach Stanley Mitchell of Morgan State 
puts a value on football and on life. Stanley Mitchell has always wanted to coach Morgan State. When it was Dunbar, he wanted to be considered for a head coach. But now Stanley Morgan, Stanley Mitchell is now the coach of Morgan. However, earlier last year, he had a heart attack. He talked about that and what the importance of both are really all about. I think it wasn't stress, it wasn't uh, cholesterol or anything, but you know, you delegate a little bit more. Uh, you just can't do everything that you think you can do in a day's work. And the key thing is delegating, put the responsibility where it should be at, you know. With a new coach, you want to make sure everything is running right, and so you take a whole lot of responsibility that you shouldn't. So now I'm going to delegate, uh, lay back, uh, I'm not going to howl and scream, and use a different way, a di different tactics, how I will come through my ball players and my coaches. I have a tremendous amount of respect for that man, Stanley Mitchell, coach of the Morgan Bears, only in his second year. It's true that he's an outfield climb with the football program, but there's so many positives when you look at what he's done. But then when you look at his life, he can look at a young man and say, look, I was near death, and I recognize what it's like, life and death. He's come back with a renewed sense of life, but at the same time, he loves being the father of the Bears, the and, Morgan Bears. Yeah, trying to restore some of the... Uh, uh, I guess illustriousness that has not been there since Papa Bear left Earl right. Banks. But Earl Banks. you look at Patton right now, and there's a, this is a very uh, this is a major source of concern right now because you've got an entire medical team down there surrounding this talented young linebacker. A big, big time source of concern right there. Well, you know, there's always concern anytime football players play on turf. Mm -hmm. And uh, turf just, is, just does not get, get like rid of it like grass. Any stadium built, I guess probably outside the state of Texas where it's too hot to grow grass during the summertime, this stuff is just not good. I mean, you, know, you, you, you look at what happened, Michael Westbrook with the Washington Redskins. You've had a number of players all season long going Arizona down. Arizona lost, what, six in one game? Rob Moore was one of them, big receiver, you know. So this AstroTurf stuff is just not healthy. And, and I would just see, let's outlaw it, you know, just, just make it illegal. Let's watch Pat Patton right there. That's him number 49. Let's see if somebody hit him. Or can't see if it's a leg or an arm. Hard to tell. But you know something? He's walking off on his own power pretty much. That may be a hyperextension. Or a shoulder set. We're going to go back downstairs to George Johnson for an update, George. Well, I got to tell you, over here, as you said, there was substantial medical attention for Mr. Patton as he laid on the field. But it was the trainer from Howard University, because they were deep involved in it as well, that told me that it looks like it's a dislocated elbow. We'll find out for sure maybe before we get off the air. Back up to you guys. Wow, how painful is that? That's a tremendous loss for Morgan because he's one of the leaders on defense. Especially down here in the red zone. Bobby Townsend trying to go in, but Justin Thompson, Thomas brings him down. Justin Thomas brings him down, number 12 for the Bears of Morgan. Let's take one last look at how resilient. Well, this is Patton right here, and he probably football. See, look at that elbow. Bang. Oh, my goodness. All the weight of the body went on his arm, and maybe his elbow did fall out of, out of place. Devastating loss for the Bears right there, but brings up a third down and 16. Third and goal, if you will, from the 16-yard line. This gives Howard a little bit more room to work with. This is what makes a dangerous offensive attack more dangerous, more room to work with in the red zone. Jermaine Hutchinson, oh, Jermaine yeah, Hutchinson in the end zone. Touchdown, Howard University. 16 yards, Jermaine Hutchinson. And that's a big-time play call because he had it set up. A little bit farther out, you got to think pass. So Morgan drops into a pass defense, and Hutchinson goes off tackle to the far side and takes it to the house. That one should ice it, folks. That was an, uh, 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 an impressive drive. If it took 10 plays, easily eight of them were runs. They went on a drive, eight straight running plays to pick up about 75 yards. That lets you know that they figured out Morgan's tired up front. We're going to make it a physical battle, and the Young Bears weren't able to handle. Impressive drive by Howard. And the field.
field goal is good. Well, the extra point, Martin. So Howard goes up 35-23 with 4.15 to go. And this is Hutchinson. Look at him. Finds the seam, explodes into the secondary, and at the point of attack, there was nobody after he cleared the line, and that's why Hutchinson is able to take it in the house. So Howard needed this drive at this point in the season, and they got a clutch drive. Just a factor to add in, that was Howard's longest drive of the season. They ran nine straight plays to make it all up. And I'm talking about big-time football for the Bison at Howard University. That was an impressive drive by Howard. Credit must be given where credit is due. Mm -hmm. And the main man on it had to be Jermaine Hutchinson. Here's Al. National Car Rental scoring drive. And it's a simple one for the Bison of Howard University. They made sure they laid it on thick and strong for the Morgan State Bears. You see, they ran the ball down their throat. Vincent Echols who went out with an injury. And then they gave it to Jermaine Hutchinson, who went off, left tackle, and found a way to get into the end zone off the right tackle. And that's our score, 35-23 at this point. Four minutes and six seconds left to go in the game. Well, barring some major blown assignment, uh, you know, it'll take nothing short of a miracle uh, for Morgan to get back into this one. But you know something? Their town, they, you, like you said, you look at guys like Armand Waters and Mark Lester and Anthony Collins. Those are talented guys. If the line steps up and gives them, gives their quarterback Patterson an opportunity to do some things, we could see another score here shortly. Well, the explosion is there. They will have to score quick and get the ball back. But against the Howard defense, that's going to be tough to do. Lester with the reception. You know, At so about the 37-yard line. That is a great touch pass by Gustavius Patterson. I mean, it just looked like he just tossed it out there on the line and leap, uh, threw it over a, a, a cornerback and just gave his tall receiver an opportunity to climb the ladder and haul it in. Opting to go with the three receiver set. And there is no second and one. No Ali Culpepper in the lineup. They are still throwing the football. Patterson. Well, he was going the in the pass was incomplete. <laughs> he was going in the general direction of Stallings. <laughs> right. But uh Obi Ara, bad knee and all, is Still, look, look at Ara. This is him just coming off the line. Nice little stunt, goes to the inside, basically unabated, and there's the pressure. Forcing the quarterback out of his comfort zone, and he's able to just get rid of it in hopes of stemming the defensive tide. Bring us right back to third and one. Ball on the 37-yard line. Explode off that time, sneaking another back in there. That's Fred Groves, 6'2", uh, 192-pound junior out of Lanham, Maryland. What's that about? 20 minutes from here? Oh, yeah, 345. Left to go in the game. Bears have the ball at the 45-yard line of the Bison. First and 10. Morgan needs to score in this drive. They have any thought of winning this football game. Six DBs now in for Howard U. Boy, I tell you, he is very impressive, especially after catching the ball, Fred Groves. You know, surveyed, hauled the, he hauled the catch in, number one. Was able to, in the midst of his juke and jive move, survey the situation, then explodes to the outside, picks up a couple of extra yards, and then goes out of bounds. And there's Ali Culpepper with some ice on his toe. So you just hope that that's not a turf toe injury because that could be one of those things that lingers all season. Second and two yards to go. Ball on the 37 for the Bears. And there was some movement. Flags were dropped in the general vicinity. 
the Morgan Bears, and uh, we'll see what happens. That would be Foster. Start offense. Five yard penalty. We remain second down. Maurice Foster, 285 pound offensive guard from Petersburg, Virginia. That'll make a second and seven yards to go. Ball is down on the 43 yard line. And Patterson now operating strictly out of the shotgun. In and out of the hands of Anthony Collins. That'll make it third and seven for the Bears on the 42-yard line. Well, that's a kid that's trying to uh, make, a, make a play before he has the football. I mean, the pass is a little high but and behind him, but you still got to haul that one in, certainly when you're trying to come back. Big play for the Bears coming up here. 334 left to go in the game. Fourth quarter action. It's been excitement. Howard put 28 points on the board in the first half. The Bears came back, made it tight, 28-23. But Howard just scored a 16-yard touchdown run by Jermaine Hutchinson. Gustavius Patterson under pressure. Still with the ball, directing the traffic. Patterson for a first down. Patterson goes out of bounds at around about the... 31 yard line. That kid knows how to run the football. Now, not, not, don't watch him roll to the near side and then watch. Look, he's going to roll. Look at this block coming up here near the end of the run, but at this point, he's already in the secondary and he's dangerous. So, Costavius Patterson with a little bit of toughness and moxie and fight left in him, able to move the Bears down into bison territory. You know, it's been a great time here at Howard University. One of the reasons why Ed, the man. Easy Ed Hill. That's the idea at Howard University. And he just basically threw that one away, Castavius Patterson. But we've had a lot of success and a lot of help here at Howard University. Ed Hill has been just great. He sends you information when you need it. He makes sure that you're on top of the situation, and they try to accommodate you the best way that they can. And then on the other side, Morgan State University, Joe McIver and Lamont Germany do a very good job. So once again, we'd like to send out our thank you and give much love to the SIDs of both schools, Ed Hill of Howard University, Joe McIver and Lamont Germany of Morgan State. It's 319 left to go in the game, 35-23. Yeah, let's let's give big props to uh, Romanda Noble for joining the, oh, the staff of definitely. Howard University. Most definitely. A adding and asserting something that was missing from the SIT department. Well, one thing, Howard was not missing on Mr. Groves. They tied him up. Howard is sending Morgan a message right now. And the message is simply this. Not in my house. Well, that will bring up. Let's see, a third and long situation. That's right, third and very long situation for the Bears. And the clock continues to roll. So this is where you go to the Mark Gray play calling book. What oh, do you do, Coach? You know something? We haven't talked about the tight end once today. I'd send the tight end right down the center of the field on a fly pattern and go for him. I guarantee First you. you got to put him in the game. That's your Ruben right. Harrison. That's number 19. He's not even in the game. That's a flag on that play. You can't be calling it. I, I want to know what that call is. That's pass interference. It's time for me to hang it up. Hey, a dead <laughs> Walton really was is. the intended receiver. Two defenders were there. Let's take a look at it, Mark. Maybe from this vantage point, you might get a better look at things. Well, let's see. Here's the ball coming right to you, and it's over his hand. you got to be kidding me. You... <laughs> well, we will have to believe that the infraction occurred earlier. I hope the folks in Baltimore don't pull my alumni car off, but that was a terrible call. Holding against the defense, against an eligible receiver, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, let's see this one more time. Let's see if we can find some holding down there. What? Here's a strike. What? That's a confident-looking oh, pass going out there. But I tell you something. And was it a catchable pass? Two defenders around one receiver and a ball that high? Sometimes you got to eat that flag, big fella. Sorry. <laughs> Mark Gray has spoken. Those are his words. Jot it down. Patterson brought down by Obi Ara. Sit down, young man. Not in my house. And Obi Ara has come to play. He may be banged up. He may be sore. But you know what? 
not in his house. Green Stadium is where he resides, and this is where he lives it up. Dude, uh, underclass, uh, upperclassmen have to step up when their teams are at critical points in the season, and that's just basically what the junior's doing right now, stepping up. Less than two minutes to go in the game. Crucial second and 21 for the Bears. Patterson still with the ball. Patterson looking to find a receiver. And once again, he went for Med Walters. And once again, Howard was there to shut it down. He had Mark Lester on the near sideline, though, locked up one-on-one. -on -one. And that's one of those situations where, as a freshman, you just don't see the field as well as you will see the field in a couple of seasons. One of the guys on that play was Vontre Long, a name that created a lot of havoc last season for the Bison. And a young man who gets it done. Here are our players of the game, our Marines. Players of the game, Ali Culpepper of Morgan State, rushed for over 100 yards today. And Bobby Townsend, the fine quarterback for the Bison of Howard University, who showed you not only does he have a great arm, but he is also the man with the wheels. A leader. And that's, that's what Howard desperately needed in that critical drive, and that's what he did. Patterson rolling out. Obiara on his case. Tracy White was there as well, rushing him right out of bounds. Just relentless is Obiara. I mean, I, I, a warrior. I mean, this guy just keeps going and going and going. It's almost like watching Warren Sapp or somebody like that. The engine just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. They've tried chop blocking him. They've tried trapping him. They've tried double teaming him. And this guy still made plays all over the field for Coach Steve Wilson and the Bison today. I'll tell you something. If uh, Bobby Townsend is player of the game, then Obi Ara definitely has to get an honorable mention. He's like unsung hero or something like that. Remember those days of the unsung hero show? Of course. 35-23 is our score. One minute and 40 seconds left to go in this football game. Fourth and 17. Morgan's got to go for it all, and they get a first down, and they're still on his feet. Number two for the Bears. He fumbles into his zone. And the ball goes back to the Bison of Howard. The catch was made by Mark Lester. He was relentless. He smelled the end zone, had the first down. Well, let's see. Did he break the plane? They didn't break the plane? That's a touchback, Mark. Okay. Let's see it again right here. This is a great individual effort. Throw the pass high. Let your receiver climb the ladder to get it. Break one tackle. Montre break Long. another tackle. And then from behind, the strip comes. Heads up play that time by Donald Lank, who comes in from the back tie. And he's a him. freshman. And that, my friends, will seal the deal. So a gallant, that's a frustrated man right there. Well, it was a gallant effort, although futile for the Bears once again. Unfortunately, you don't get any victories for, uh, you know, cosmetics or things of that nature. And now all Howard has to do is just fall, uh, down the football, go to a knee. Morgan has no timeouts. And I think maybe two plays. And still trying to get more on the stat board is Jermaine Hutchinson. I can tell you this much, it's been a fun and exciting game. A game that looked like it was not going to be competitive. Right. A game that turned out to be competitive. Mm -hmm. Howard will receive his first victory of the season. They will move to 1-3 and three on the season, while the Bears will move to 0-3 oh on the season. And as we stated at the beginning of the game, someone's O had to go. And it looks like it's going to be the HUO that's leaving. So it's a big win for Howard getting ready for a tough matchup against Florida A&M next week. And this is knee close once again. And that probably will be the final play of the game. All Howard has to do is down the ball. We're going to be out of timeouts. George Johnson has done an exciting job for us down on the sidelines. George, we're glad to have you as part of our broadcast team. Great pictures brought to you all day today. And, of course, we've got some of the best photographers and engineers all around. Thank you, George. George. And, see, he's beaming right now, as many HU guys do these days when they play Morgan. Hey, you know, he's, you can always tell an HU man. <laughs> yeah, they, you can't, can't tell, tell him much. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we've got 22 seconds left to go in the game. Ronnie Duncan for Mark Gray saying it's been a pleasure. The final score will be 35 to 23. The Bears fall once again to the Howard Bison. Our next television game will be Hampton taking on Delaware State at 12 noon. We'll see you then. Good day, everybody, for me at College Football Saturday. Have a great day.
Montrell Coley was the man, rushing 463 yards and scoring the game winner as the Pirates escaped with a tough overtime win. Meanwhile, it was a record-setting day in Dover as Rashawn Matthews and Darnerian McCants connected for five touchdowns to lead the comeback. Hampton visits Delaware State, and the Hornets look to make a big leap. It's me at college.